Members of the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 26th of June, 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosperous deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. I ask you to remain standing in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. <coughs> members, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, council meeting Tuesday, the 26th of June, 2018. Apologies and leave of absence. Uh, we have one apology, which is Councillor Milani, and we welcome Councillor Moran back. Welcome. Members, can I take you to item six, which is confirmation of minutes, which is for the meeting held on the 12th of June, 2018, moved by Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Any questions or queries, members, with regards to the minutes from said meeting? I'll put this matter before you to adopt those minutes. Those in favour? Those against, so members, we have adopted the minutes from the meeting held on the 12th of June 2018. Members, item seven on your agendas. I received uh, two requests for deputations today, uh, one of which I received because it came in on time, and it's from Anne Dunstan, the principal from Pulteney Grammar School, and I received a second deputation, members, from Ms Kelly Henderson, which came in after the prescribed time, and I duly rejected it on that basis. So, members, can I please welcome Anne Dunstan to the podium to uh, speak to us for a period of five minutes. Ms Dunstan, welcome to the Adelaide City Council Chamber, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you for the opportunity to address Council this evening. I acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pay respect to elders past and present. Pulteney Grammar School has been a responsible custodian of Blue Gum Park, Karanga, Park 20 for nearly a century. From grazing livestock to manicured sporting grounds, we've seen the park change and evolve as usage needs and volumes have changed, just as our city has changed. 
The Adelaide Harriers Athletics Club, also a key licence holder in the park, was formed in 1913 and since 1921 they have been located in the park and for all that time our two entities have enjoyed a strong and harmonious relationship. Together we share the same ethos and aspirations and we're deeply committed to supporting the vibrancy of this park. Together, our collective work over many years has facilitated greater usage of Blue Gum Park Karanga by multiple users, in addition to those directly associated with our organisations. It is vital that to attract more users to the Adelaide Parklands, the provision of contemporary community facilities is prioritised. This is in complete alignment with APLA's charter that focuses on not only protecting, but also enhancing the Adelaide Parklands for the maximum benefit of all users. Harriers and Pulteney's successful joint expression of interest lodged with Council last year focused on us continuing to maximise and increase the community use of the park. In addition, a focus was placed on delivering on goals set out in the Sports Infrastructure Master Plan endorsed by Council in 2014. That sets out the compelling vision and, I quote, Blue Gum Park, Karanga Park 20 will be a key sport and recreation precinct with facilities and infrastructure servicing a range of school and community sports. Blue Gum Park, Karanga enjoys one of the highest levels of community use across the parklands with in excess of 136,000 users per year. The Adelaide Parklands Management Strategy 2015 to 2025 focuses on, and I quote, the provision of amenities, shelters, seating, toilets, etc., adjacent to sports fields and recreation areas to encourage and support ongoing use by the general public. The desire to weave informal recreation through sports areas to create rich multifunctional social and community spaces is also emphasised in this strategy. Our proposal is clearly aligned with these aspirations. Pulteney currently holds the head licence for sporting fields and the school has effectively managed the issuing and coordination of sub-licences on behalf of the Adelaide City Council for many years. This currently involves over 25 individual community clubs. Similarly, Harry has sub to a range of clubs catering to the breadth of athletic endeavours. Like many ageing facilities in the parklands, the fabric of the buildings in the Blue Gum Park, Karanga, is very poor and unsafe. These council-owned properties have not been significantly upgraded since they were built in the 1960s. They currently cannot cater for the significant demand and particularly the rapid increase in the rates of female participation in sport. There are eight ovals in Park 20 that are used for recreation, training and formal sporting competition every day and then more heavily by community users, the Harriers and the school midweek until late into the evening and all day on weekends. In contrast, there are currently only four small change rooms spread across two buildings that do not meet basic building codes, let alone provide the floor space and fit out required by current sports infrastructure guidelines. This was confirmed by a tour of those facilities in late 2016 by a number of elected members of the Adelaide City Council and further to this, a report commissioned by the AFL in that same year. The current substandard structures provide very limited participant, spectator and maintenance facilities, including toilets. There's no disability access or protection from the weather. Recreational and casual users of the park who cycle, walk their dog, run or picnic in the park are at a distinct disadvantage without improved facilities. The resolution passed at APLA's meeting last week gave in principle support for the consolidation of the existing facilities which are not fit for, fit for purpose and do not meet the needs of all park users. Together, Adelaide Harriers and Pulteney Grammar School are committed to working with the City of Adelaide and APLA to further refine the concept designs for this proposed multi-use community and sporting hub with a particular focus on the size and impact of the facility and to demonstrate the ways in which broader community and casual use will be facilitated. Naturally, we're all at the very early stages of exploring this opportunity and it is important to ensure that any proposed buildings, site improvements and overall design are aligned at all times with the agreed strategy for the park plans to offer the widest public benefit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms Dunstan. Thank you very much indeed. Members, we have no further deputations. <coughs> and we have no requests for petitions this evening. So I will take you directly to item 9.1, which is members, for you to note the advice which has come to you from APLA with regards to one, of course, this matter, which you will have an opportunity to debate at item 12.6 further along your agendas, 
and then also advice with regard to a special music event, which again you'll have an opportunity to debate at item 12.10. But members, you may ask questions, of course, with regards to the ampler matter. So, Councillor Mayor, you're moving to note. I'm moving as printed. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Slama. Any questions with regards to Apple's advice members? There are none, so I'll put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you, members. Apple's advice has been noted. Members, item 10 is the Lord Mayor's report. Uh, members, I have over recent weeks provided a multitude of speeches and attended a multitude of events, but Members, the Adelaide's carbon neutral ambitions I spoke to with regards to at the Renewable Cities Conference and the Energy Storage Conference. I also proudly gave the opening address at the City of Adelaide Access and Inclusion Community Stakeholders Workshop in Pilgrim Hall, which was to inform the creation of a new access and inclusion strategy for 2019 to 2022, which I'm sure members in good time will be coming back before committee and council. I gave thanks to the City of Adelaide's volunteers at a morning tea at the West Terrace Cemetery, and I also attended the State Government's volunteer thank you event. And as you know, members, our volunteers play an extraordinary role in terms of their contribution to our wonderful city. I spoke about the importance of reconciliation at a Sorry Day event at Tartan Younger Victoria Square and Launch Council's stretch reconciliation plan at the Reconciliation Week breakfast at Adelaide Oval and congratulations to our team for their work in that piece. I spoke about the importance of reconciliation also. Um, members, I also attended a uh, meeting organised by the Australia Political Exchange with a delegation of MPs and councillors from New Zealand and presented at the Adelaide Convention Bureau Business Hour event at the Hotel Richmond about tourism growth and council's role and council's support in that area. I took part in a panel at the South Australian Tourism Industry Council's first Meet the Minister industry event alongside Minister for Tourism, the Honourable David Ridgway MLC, which was held here at Town Hall recently. I spoke at the Australian Institute of Urban Planning South Australia member briefing on the Adelaide and the new economy. I opened the Lord Mayor's Cultural Think Tank and spoke, at the, and spoke of the importance of the education sector at the opening of the new Urban Nest University of Adelaide facility on North Terrace. I also addressed a community bike ride for U United Nations World Bicycle Day at Victoria Park. Yesterday I attended the first uh, Capital City Committee meeting uh, with uh, Deputy Lord Mayor Vershaw and Councillor Abiyad, uh, with Premier Stephen Marshall and Minister Stefan Canole and Minister Rachel Sanderson. I also hosted the second Lord Mayor's Parklands Ramble for 2018 where we heard from Uncle Lewis O'Brien and Rhoda Harris while taking in the sights of Ben Arthur Park and the North Adelaide Golf Courses. Recently, I had the honour of hosting a reception to present the key to the city to Mike Turter and to host a Lord Mayoral reception to launch the 2018 Tour de Legacy, which is a fundraising event for veterans support organisation Legacy. Also hosted the History Council of South Australia Annual Awards, hosted by councils Adelaide Community Leaders and Sustainability Graduation held a meeting with luxury brands in Sydney and provided a welcome to the city event for Joy Main Incentive Tourism Group from China. Also attended the Australian Local Government Association National General Assembly with Councillor Clarahan and took part in a panel regarding the national priorities for the City of Adelaide uh, at Parliament House in Canberra with a number of federal ministers and shadows. While in Canberra, I also provided the keynote speech to the Parliamentary Friendship Group for Better Cities on Adelaide as a smart city, where we also later met the Honourable Alex Hawke MP, Assistant Minister for Home Affairs, the Honourable Paul Fletcher MP, Minister for Urban Infrastructure and Cities, and we also met with the staff of <coughs> Minister Angus Taylor about a number of matters which I will report back to you in a very short period of time, members. In addition to attending several Lord Mayoral receptions, the Lady Mayoress also joined me at several functions commemorating the birthday of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and also attended the 10th anniversary of the South Australian <coughs> Government's Children in State Care Apology. Uh, this week, the Lady Mayoress has attended several Refugee Week celebrations, including the launch of SA Ref Refugee Week 2018 presentation, hosted a morning tea at Town Hall for Refugees, and related organisations and will welcome guests tomorrow at the Australian Migrant, Migrant Resource Centre World Refugee Day 2018 event here at Town Hall. 
Members, finally and very importantly, I'd like to take the opportunity to note the passing of former Lord Mayor Steve Contis AM, who died on the Friday the 22nd of June. As a member of the Adelaide City Council for some 25 years, from 1968 to 1993, including six years and three terms as Lord Mayor, Mr Condes then served as State Member for Colton until 2002. During his quarter of a century as Councillor and Lord Mayor, Mr Condes played an integral role in shaping the City of Adelaide as a business, education, residential and tourism destination. And amongst his many achievements were securing upgrades to Hutt Street and the Adelaide Aquatic Centre in North Adelaide. He was also instrumental in encouraging residential developments in the West End and Halifax Street to grow our city's population and to green our many city streets. Throughout his career, Mr Condes was also incredibly active as patron and supporter of numerous community and sporting clubs and always gave generously of his time. In 2014, he was recognised with an Order of Australia for service to South Australia's Parliament local government and community. On behalf of the City of Adelaide, I express our deepest condolences to Mr Condes' wife and the former Lady Mayoress, Mrs Angela Condes and family. Most of all, Steve Condes will be remembered as a true gentleman of the people who had a great love for the community of the City of Adelaide and for the Adelaide Central Market. And as a mark of respect, flags at Adelaide Town Hall were flown at half-mast over the weekend. Members, I understand the funeral for Mr Condes will be held on Thursday. So I know you share my enthusiasm for the profound contribution which he made to our city. Members, could I ask that a member please move to have that uh, uh, adopted, moved by Councillor Clara Hand, seconded by Councillor Abiyad. All those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you very much indeed, members. Members, I look to item 11.1, .1, which is Councillor's reports. Members, uh, before I ask to move, would any members like to speak individually to their councillor's report? Councillor Wilkinson. Um, I have an award to announce with a speech to go with. Thank you, councillor. Uh, I have here the PEER, which is the Planning Institute of Australia Commendation Certificate. In November 2017, the City of Adelaide won the Planning Institute of Australia SA Award for its 30 years of built heritage in the City of Adelaide project in the Best Planning Ideas Large Project category. This win automatically entered the project into the Planning Institute of Australia National Awards for Planning Excellence held in Perth, Western Australia in May this year. As part of an impressive array of large-scale projects from around Australia, the City of Adelaide's 30 years of the built heritage in the City of Adelaide project was privileged to be awarded with a commendation. The multi-award winning project incorporates the Heritage Incentive Scheme, which has assisted thousands of owners over the years and fantastic results can be seen forever here and after in the city streets and helps preserve our history for future generations. The Heritage Incentive Scheme's humble beginnings of $100,000 in 1988, Steve Connors' time, the 2017-18 financial year so far has seen $1.04 million allocated to 97 conservation projects so far. Some key projects over the 30 years include the Beehive Corner, the Adelaide Mosque Minarets, the Beresford Arms, which Council purchased and saved from the brink of collapse, West's Coffee Palace, Botanic Chambers and Her Majesty's Theatre. In presenting this award to you tonight, it is appropriate to acknowledge the contributions of our citizens, past council members and many professionals, including heritage architects and advisors, planners and specialist tradespeople to Adelaide's Heritage. I present this to you. Lord Mayor. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Wilkinson, <coughs> and congratulations on your contribution to that endeavour. Um, can I also thank members, our CEO and our directors, for 30 years of exemplary work when it comes to heritage conservation and policies. Thank you and well done. Round of applause, members.
Members, any further comments from councillors' reports? Councillor Clarehan. Lord Mayor, I um, don't actually have a written report, but I just wanted to um, inform the council that on the 13th of June, um, I was appointed president of the Local Government Association and therefore also have been appointed as a member of the Australian Local Government As uh, Association as well. And I've already attended my first um, ALGA board meeting prior to the uh, national uh, conference in Canberra. And it's a great, uh, not only is it a great responsibility, but it's also a great honour. And uh, as the state government imposed a hundred day timeline on some of on the achievement of some of its um, election platforms. I have about 100 days in the role prior to a regional president uh, then being appointed for the next two years. <laughs> Councillor Clara Han, uh, well done and congratulations on that appointment. And uh, we're all very appreciative. We're all very proud of you for doing so. Well done. Members, could I please have a mover to adopt the councillors' reports for the purpose of this meeting? Moved by the Deputy Lord, Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. All those in favour? Those against? We will carry the councillors' reports, which is item 11.1. .1. Members, this takes you on to, in your papers, which is item 12.1, which is page 10 in your papers, you've got a recommendation to endorse and note. This is the 2018-2019 grant recommendations. Moved by Councillor Moran, as printed, Councillor? As printed, Lord Mayor. Seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, do I have any debate about this matter? Councillor Moran, summing up? Summed up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.1. That was very quick, Claire. <laughs> Members, 12.2, Wyatt Street Temporary Outdoor Dining, page 40 of your papers. Councillor Slama, moving as printed. Moving as printed, Lord Mayor. I look for a second of members. Moved, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Slummer. Just quickly, Lord Mayor, I'd um, like to congratulate the team on some good work. And I noticed that, that a few of the neighbours have since come out of the woodwork and said we will be part of this, noting that it is temporary and uh, certainly looking to activate that, that part of the white place. So uh, well done to the team for taking up uh, an out of the uh, out of the box project and uh, giving it a go. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to this matter? <laughs> Members, I look to the floor. <laughs> Any questions, queries, or debate? Members, before I hand you back to Councillor Slam, I might make some comments. I am supportive of this outcome. Um, the and I've just got. It's really for future consideration, uh, members, in terms of, I presume it is up to the owner of the said business to maintain the upkeep of this infrastructure CEO. Is that correct? Yeah, three will move, that is correct. And I presume after looking at the report that of course there are no imminent concerns about safety or traffic management associated with its installation. That's correct too. <coughs> CEO, it also says in the report that this is typically envisaged as a shorter term outcome. Um, what does that mean in terms of number of years? I'll hand over to Beth, thanks. Through you and to you, Lord Mayor. Um, we are envisaging about a 12 month, probably a 12 month period um, during which we'll work with the um, traders to assess if it has, in, if the park has in fact benefited their business. Um, we have also, um, we will also undertake to discuss with them if indeed they're looking to extend their opening hours as a result of the parklet. They mainly have a lunchtime trade, uh, but they also have coffee trade during the day. They're currently close at 3.30 on weekdays they're open, but we'll certainly have a discussion with them pending council's decision tonight about <coughs> extending their hours and at the end of the 12 months we'll reassess. Uh, thank you, Director. Before you hand, I hand you back to Councillor Slam to sum up, I think that's a pertinent point to be mindful of, Councillors. The, these activations on our street, city streets typically look the part when there are people sitting there. But of course, when the business is closed, it doesn't. And uh, I do hope, and I'd be happy to look at this as a test case, and I know that Councillor Slama has shown me evidence in the past of a similar installation in the East End, which after time did positively influence the outcome in terms of trading hours of another business. 
but I hope it does activate greater trading hours of these businesses because in many ways it is a great benefit to them and uh, in so many ways they should be capitalising on that. Councillor Slama to sum up. Yeah, summed up. Members, I put this matter before you 12.2. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried, 12.2. Members, item 12.3, you've got a recommendation to improve. Councillor Clarehan, as printed. Seconded by Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Clarehan, do you wish to speak to this matter? Only to say that um, this has been a while coming. We note that it's almost a year. Um, and I think it's a, a very important pilot study. Um, and certainly it's something that um, we receive feedback about continuously, about how difficult it is for some of our older um, city users and residents to get across the street uh, in a suitable amount of time. We really do need to continue to pay attention to the walkability of our city and to the safety of our city. And I. North Adelaide people know that as a result of um, traffic light sequencing and also uh, the short amount of time for people to get across uh, Connell Street, for example, that one woman lost her life. So, um, but I and we've also heard stories of people tripping, breaking hips, etc., because they just don't have sufficient time to cross the street. And given the incredible progress of technology. Um, and our push to be a smart city, uh, I think that you know we've we've now got the tools available, uh, and hopefully the pilot will actually show us um, how we can improve the safety and the walkability of the city for all. Thank you, Councillor Clearhan. Councillor Abia, do you second it? Do you wish to speak to the matter? I'll reserve my right. I suppose. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, I think it's more than a year since uh, Councillor Clohan first mentioned about the fatality in O'Connell Street where somebody, an elderly person, <coughs> was crossing the road and took, uh, the crossing changed too quickly. Um, is there uh, going to be an opportunity for us to consider which of these options? We're doing a pilot in two different locations, but there's sort of five different sort of methods that are discussed in the report, so I'm not quite clear. Um, how that's going to be, how that's going to be piloted. Uh, but in my view, given that most of the beneficiaries of this are elderly people, I would think that the um, uh, one option involving having a mobile phone app would not work for elderly people that that would uh, might benefit from this. And and the inconvenience of having to have a special card and get it out of your purse or whatever. To swipe thing every time you go, I think would also not be particularly workable. And some of the other technologies are incredibly expensive, and which would mean that we just have two in two locations because that's all we could afford. Whereas the the simple push to activate where the button is just held down for longer was quite an inexpensive one that could easily be uh, rolled out right across the city. And I, I personally think that that was the most prudent. Um, Approach in my in my view, having read the read the options, but how how is this pilot intended to be run out in terms of these options? Please. Thanks, Councillor. We'll take that as a question. CEO. Daniel, thanks. Uh, through the chair, uh, thank you for the question. The first stage would be to undertake surveys with both those local communities to understand and assess the technology against their needs. Uh, we then take that on board. Um, and then identify the most appropriate technology based on that on that survey, and then we would apply that to both those intersections. We're more than happy to bring that back to you if we need to. That answers the question, Councillor. Members, any further debate? I take you back to Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. We didn't mention um, the particular uh, suggested uh, devices, and that's something that our administration can follow up. And you're perfectly correct in identifying that apps may not necessarily suit some of the people we're actually targeting to assist. And the other thing is, of course, we have lots of overseas and interstate visitors, and they may not necessarily have access to the app initially either. So I think that'll all be taken into account um, when our administration determine which of the um, devices are most suitable for this particular pilot. 
Thank you, Councillor. So, ma uh, members, I accordingly put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried, members, which is item 12.3. Members, with regards to item 12.4, which is a review of the Adelaide Parklands Authority charter and sitting fee payments, uh, we don't have a full chamber this evening, and we have five council members who sit on APLA, which means we will lose a quorum on that matter because there's a pecuniary benefit. So members, what I'm suggesting is that we will... Excuse me, Lord, may I yes. understand reading, just having read it there in the last minute, that the actual remuneration is not, will be discussed separately, or am I reading it wrong? This does not change any remuneration or... <coughs> I've been advised, Councillor, that we'd need to do this in two parts, and in order to debate Part B, uh, we would need to preserve a quorum to do so, and the sitting members of APLA would not be enabled to be in the room. That's my understanding, CEO. Well, it says Is that here, correct? It says on page 55 the remuneration of the authority board members can be considered separately to the charge. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so that, is, that is correct. So, members, what we will do accordingly uh, is that I would look for a mover for Part A, and we can debate that accordingly. Uh, do you have a question, Councillor Martin? Uh, yeah, no, Lord Mayor, I was going to propose an alternative motion. Uh, let me just, you, you can do so, but let me just explain procedurally before I accept it, if I can, please. So, members, given the quorum issue associated with this, and certainly part B of it, the only way I could bring it back to this council chamber is when I have a full quorum. <coughs> so, that will come back to you, pending on the outcome of Councillor Martin's alternate motion, which, of course, he's entitled to do. Um, uh, the, we would bring part two back once we knew we had a full complement of councillors. I'm sure you understand that. So, Councillor Martin, what would you like to do? Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd like to um, uh, move that Council defers consideration of the APLA Charter amendments until the amendments are discussed at a committee workshop. We would require a seconder for that to occur. That's seconded by Councillor Clarehan. Your reasoning, Councillor? Sure. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, do you want me to wait until... Um, we catch up with the screen, or is it there? Okay, you can debate the matter, and uh, at the end of your discussion, I think the members know precisely what you're looking to achieve. You can check the wording at the end of your debate. The floor is yeah, yours. Thank you. Yeah. Um, look, uh, we did have a workshop on this on the 15th of May uh, when there was a lot discussed, but mainly the remuneration for APLA board members. There wasn't much discussion about the detail, which is surprising because this is the first time the Charter has been changed um, since it was created and then adopted in 2006. And uh, so far as I can see from the, uh, the workshop papers, uh, none of the matters that concern me here and might concern other council members were covered. Uh, for example, at 3.2.2, there's a new paragraph at F which gives the nod to national heritage listing, but doesn't even acknowledge APLA's own decision of May 24th this year to support state heritage listing. And there's certainly no mention of uh, uh, world heritage listing. <coughs> then at 3.23, there's a, a new power accorded to the state saying APLA will have regard to the state's plans for the parklands, uh, but it doesn't really say what that means in practice. Um, and by the way, there's a, a, a change to the glossary which deletes the minister to all references related to the state. So it's now just state authorities and departments when the charter refers to the state. And uh, the authority at 3.2.2 is now given a G capacity to make decisions where strategies and policies are silent. And then at 3.2.2, APLA will have a new power related to liquor licensing policy. Um, and it doesn't say whether that accords with council liquor licensing policy or whether it's its own liquor licensing policy. It, it's hard to understand how it works. And the issue which uh, this council and the LGA had uh, trouble agreeing with was uh, adopted in the, uh, the document here at 4.8.3. For the first time, APLA meetings will be able to be held by Skype or telephone. That is to say, members or the whole of the board don't have to be in the same room, the same city, the same country uh, to meet and decide the fate of the parklands. They can vote as they please and the vote would be verified at a later date. But there's also at 8.11 a brand new big power 
Um, it's a whole series of clauses that gives the CEO and you, Lord Mayor, as presiding officer of the authority, uh, to, in certain circumstances, sack the whole board. To get rid of them. <laughs> um, now, there's, uh, there's so much more of this uh, here. In, uh, it must be a temptation, Lord Mayor. Um, there is so much more in here <laughs> to talk about. Uh, really substantial changes, and I think each of those that I've mentioned are really major changes, and none of them were covered in the workshop at all. Uh, so I think, given the concurrence of there being some difficulty in relation to remuneration, and these fairly major details, not least that which relates to dismissal of the board and uh, the holding of meetings by Skype or telephone, then I think we ought to have another look at this, specifically at those sections which are brand new. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So, members, you are debating an alternate motion to defer this matter to a committee. It was seconded by Councillor Clarahan. Do you wish to speak to a councillor? Members, you're debating an alternate motion to defer. Do I have any comment, query, or debate? Councillor Abbiot? Lord Mayor, I'm specifically taking your point. We can't deal with this item tonight as a result of the remuneration issue. We so can't. Sorry, Councillor, I'll just assist you for the purposes of your discussion. We can deal with part A, we cannot deal with part B. We'd have to do them separately in parts. Part B would have had to be deferred anyway due to lack of a quorum. Which is the remuneration part. Okay. okay. So uh, given that, we might, might as well have a deferral uh, put in place then. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hender? Well, no, I also support the deferral, um, um, and I wonder whether, I know we've been given a copy of the new charter and we've also been given a document that outlines the differences, but could we get a marked up copy because it's so much easier to understand? Yeah, well. There was one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't see yeah. oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't see that, so thank you. Your wish is granted, Councillor. <laughs> Members, any further debate? Councillor Wilkinson, the floor is yours. Uh, you no, know, I thank Councillor Martin for, for um, raising those issues. The CEO is going to make a comment before I hand back to the movement. Sorry, Lord Mayor, just to clarify that um, this isn't time sensitive, so a deferral is fine. But just by way of explanation, um, the document that you have before you was tabled at the workshop. There was a workshop. We did have a discussion. Um, we can do that again, though, but just to say that we went through a process. <laughs> Um, and we'll just simply repeat that process and, and explore further some of your concerns. Thank you, CEO. No, now, f no further debate, so I'm going to put you back. Councillor Clarahan, you, you referred, you reserved your right. Do you wish to speak? Lord Mayor, I need to pick up on another point on um, page 55, um, eligibility for sitting fees. I note that um, while section, uh, paragraph 26 talks about while individual employment contracts may prevent some members from receiving payment for participation on the board, as a matter of principle and equity, all members should be paid equally. This is the position recommended to council. And I'm just asking the question, given that state government, members of state government administration aren't usually allowed to accept sitting fees for undertaking their work, does this now mean that we are paying the state government um, for members of staff to attend the authority meetings, which I find very interesting. Allow me to refer that to the CEO, Councillor. We're allowed to discuss remuneration, are we? CEO, is this a matter in, is, is there any... It's not about the amount, it's just about the principle. Not it's very good now. I agree, I don't think it's necessary to discuss right here now. I'll take that on notice. When we have the workshop, we'll be able to explain it for you. Thank you, councillors. I take you back to the move out, Councillor Martin. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Members, I put this motion to defer before you. Those in favour? Those against? Matter deferred. Carried. <laughs> Members, item 12.5, which is page 81 of your papers, you've got a recommendation to note and endorse regarding the city ring route review. I look to you. Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Hender. Councillor Moran, your moving is printed, I presume. I am, Correct. Would you like to speak to the matter, Councillor? Uh, yes, I would. 
yes, well, it is to note, I mean, obviously the health and the usability, uh, viability of the city railroads are vitally important to stop to, to uh, stop the massive amount of through traffic that plagues both North Adelaide and the city. Um, we did at one stage stop everybody and counted uh, Jeffcott Street and I think it was 90, over 90% 90 was through traffic, not even stopping in the city, just going from um, north to south and the other way south to north. The council then put its own little by bypass around Memorial Drive, which worked very well and we signposted that well, took a lot of traffic off. But it is of great value to us to encourage the city ring route review and make it much more attractive. It is not a good ring route now. Um, it is unpleasant to drive on and uh, it, 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 in my opinion, encourages people to go through the city. Uh, the enormously long um, traffic signals that Sue refers to down O'Connell Street and Jeffcott Street, which cause pedestrian hazards as well, is the previous government's way of, of taking the pressure off the ring road. But the whole point was the ring road was supposed to take the pressure off us. We now have, I think it's something eight times longer uh, traffic traffic signal timing than going east, hang on, east west, yeah. East west is a very quick turnaround where the north south is enormously long. So we are actively funneling cars off the ring road. So I think to, uh, to encourage improvement of the ring road is something the city really needs to, to be, at, be an active seat at that table. And I applaud this report. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Hender, you seconded? Not speaking, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, I, I support this um, report. I think the through traffic is the bane of the city. People driving through it, I personally would be supportive of parts of the ring where you have the speed of an increase to 70. That would pay. That would actually encourage people to go around the city rather than through it. So we've got sections where it's completely divided, divided roads and things like that. But one part that I don't think needs particularly repairing is the Britannia roundabout, which um, which I use every day and it flows seamlessly. And I think it was gross waste of money to, to and ugly to do a, a road separation there where the twin roundabout scheme. Um, come up by Dipti's own engineers. I thought it was a brilliant solution and uh, they don't have crossovers like that around the um, Arc de Triomphe in Paris and that's dealing with more traffic than this is. So I actually think that that aspect of the ring route is actually working very well as it is. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Clarence. Lord Mayor, I do. I just wanted to acknowledge that there have been there has been a lot of money spent on the ring route in terms of uh, railway crossings, for example, over on Park Terrace. That has had a huge impact on traffic flow, and um, also, of course, the getting the buses off Hackney Road um, and that at that North Terrace intersection. So I think you know, whilst there's still lots to do, I think we do need to acknowledge that there has been an enormous uh, amount of money spent on um, some locations to improve the traffic flow and to entice people to get off uh, the major roads into the city and to use the ring route. And of course, one can also um, cite the North South, uh, Main South Road uh, works as well um, from Darlington right through um, to the north. So um, we're getting there, but we've still got a long way to go in terms of addressing through traffic within the city as Councillor Moran has outlined already. Thank you, members. Before I hand you back to the mover, the grade separation on Park Terrace with regards to has made a profound difference. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. It will certainly appear, members, that today that the uh, matter with regards to the Britannia roundabout, which is one part of a much larger puzzle, um, has certainly been extremely media noteworthy. Uh, I echo the sentiments that the, the dual roundabout system certainly works more effectively and is more timely. Uh, and I think everybody would unanimously agree with that. But what it has not translated to, evidently, is a reduction in motor vehicle accidents at the said roundabout. And that may be as a consequence over four years of a growth in volume. But if we look at the statistics members between 2012 and 2016, I think over two roundabouts, it totals some 51 motor vehicle accidents. And that's fairly comparable to the four years prior to that when it was a single roundabout. So, and again, that 
could be partially explained by, by growth. There are more motor vehicles travelling through that roundabout than there probably were eight years ago, and I'm sure you'd acknowledge that too. But um, I agree, I will advocate on your behalf, members. It's an important matter to make sure the ring route is operating at optimum efficiency. Councillor Moran. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Thank you very much, members. That's item 12.5. Members, item 12.6 is Pulteney Grammar proposed sport and community building in Blue Gum Park, Karanga. You've got a recommendation to note and request. I look to Councillor Slama, who had a hand up first, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Councillor Slama, do you wish to speak to this matter? Lord Mayor, I will just briefly speak to it. I think it's a. Um, speaking in favour as printed? I'll speak in favour as printed, yes. Thank you. Um, sorry, I think it's a much needed um, improvement to what is the busiest section of parklands in the south, 136,000 users, 50 clubs, multiple games of sport, pretty well seven days a week. Um, in saying that, um, I declare no interest to any schools <laughs> in Adelaide, and, and I've heard that discussion come up, and there, that, that there was a a, a commercial just you know advantage to that school. I have none of those interests. I, my kids use the parklands, you know, from, from different sport perspective. But Lord Mayor, those containers that are there at the moment, those facilities that haven't evolved really in years and years and years. I know the green roof on this particular development. Uh, I do sit on on the Appler board at the time when when it was when it came to to Appler and. Um, also want to um, acknowledge that uh, Apple's recommendation, which we noted earlier, but the green roof and the design of the architect of that building, I think gives a great compliment to the parklands. Community use, the school that's been there for, for such a long time, uh, have put up with amenities that are substandard. The uh, continual growth in, in women's support, Lord Mayor, the, the uh, need to have suitable facilities for them, in those parklands. I think this addresses everything. And I think this will set us clear for the next 50 years in terms of what happens down there. And I think it's a good design, well needed and well balanced approach by the uh, by the school and the architects as presented. And I'd also note that uh, they've taken on board the recommendations of Apple to reduce the footprint. And then I understand there's other, other designs that they're working with to, in, in order to achieve that. Um, but I'm in full support of, of what I see. Thank you, Councillor Slava. So, members, the seconder of this motion was Councillor Corbell Moore. Then I've got Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran. Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm also going to be um, speaking in support of this. I, um, I thank uh, Principal Ann Dunstan for coming in and speaking to us. Um, I think that the school has such an outstanding reputation in our community, and it's a long standing member, and um, they do look after our parkland so well. And there's, there's high activity usage that always has been as projected to increase. We need to make sure that into the future, the facilities that are there are updated, and they're accessible, um, there's disability access, there's increased patronage of female sport, sport that's taking place on the parklands. And I really think it's wonderful that the school is taking the initiative to open up the facilities that they're looking to build to create opportunities for it to become a community hub. So the connections between the school and the community. Um, I do think it's really important that they continue to refine their planning and their concept, um, in particular around the size and scale, the permeability and the greenery of the building. Um, I don't look forward to seeing what those future refinements are. Thank you, Councillor Corbellmore. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to declare a perceived conflict of interest because my children attend the school, part of a larger group, um, that as a member of APLA, um, I agree with the, uh, the sentiments of APLA in terms of there's ample, whilst being very supportive of the, the general um, proposal and the need to uh, um, uh, rationalise the, the olive um, 1960s, um, Olive Green 1960s buildings, there's ample scope for more sharing and consolidation in the toilet and change room facilities and potential digging into the ground and lowering the building. So there's, there's uh, whilst being very supportive of the general cluster thing, I, I support the outflows position that there's um, also ample scope for it to be um, uh, 
uh, adjust in its design to reduce its impact on the parklands whilst providing the benefits that it does. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, Councillor Martin, followed by Councillor Moran, followed by the Deputy Mayor. <coughs> Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I just want to move a slight amendment um, uh, to uh, three, um, where it talks about reduce the size of the and impact of the design on the parklands to ensure <laughs> the current footprint of buildings when consolidated. Um, uh, I'm happy uh, to read that in full, if that would assist the administration. Yes, it would. So if you could please read that slowly and in full, and then I'll look for a second after which time you've read it, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so it reads, three reads, request the Botany Grammar School and the Adelaide Athletics, uh, Harriers Athletic Club, further refine the concept uh, design to reduce um, and then I say instead of to reduce, to ensure no greater area than the current footprint of buildings when consolidated. If you read that line again, please. Sure. Just say so there's no increase in footprint. Okay, well, I'm happy uh, to accept Councillor Moran's suggestion. So there is no increase in footprint. Councillor Martin, you need to be clear so the secretary okay. can capture your words before which time you do that, you don't okay. have a motion. Okay, refine the concept design to the, so there is no increase in footprint and I'm being asked to add and no classroom and then it would resume and provide two alternative concept proposals for the buildings. Okay. Councillor, if you please look to your screen to ensure that those words are capturing your intent, I'll then look for a seconder and we'll have a debate about an amendment to the motion as principally moved by Councillor Slama. Correct. And the word when uh, can be removed and then that is correct. Okay. So, members, I'll look for a seconder and then you are debating. Councillor Moran is the seconder. So, members, you are now debating an amendment. Councillor Martin, floor is yours. Yeah, th uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, can I just say at the outset that I support Pulteney Grammar School upgrading its facilities on the parklands, creating new amenities and services for women, and for catering for the Harriers Athletic Club. I acknowledge that their facilities are indeed poor. Um, look, I am grateful to APLA for having, uh, by its wording, scaled the development back by asking for a reduction in size and impact. But what I'm suggesting is that we need to follow more closely the practice of this council in the parklands. Pulteney is asking to increase its footprint from 572 square metres to almost 1,000 square metres. It's a huge increase in land. And the floor space increase they're seeking is from 572 square metres to almost 1,500 square metres. Now, this is at odds with our practice. Uh, summarised, I thought, by you, Lord Mayor, very well in a letter to a ratepayer about the uh, Pulteney uh, proposal. And you said, the City of Adelaide has consistently taken a very protective view of the parklands and zealously aimed to minimise slash eliminate any increase in built form footprint. And then it goes on and talks about how we do that. And you say a great example of where these principles have driven an outcome is Park 24, adjacent Adelaide High School, where the Comets Football Club and Western District's Athletics Clubs are demolishing three existing buildings to construct one new shared facility that does not exceed the combined footprint of the original buildings. Uh, Lord Mayor, may I thank you for so succinctly summing up uh, the circumstances. Uh, we as a council did hold the, uh, the working class Adelaide Comets Football Club to their footprint and this council also held the Prince Alfred College to the same footprint at Park Nine. And um, it would be consistent for us to add the, uh, the proposal to Pulteney to that list, that is a uh, footprint of 572 square metres. Now how they deal with that is up to them, I, I wouldn't seek to interfere in that. But the principle is established, it is in our uh, policies, and within that footprint, it should be possible to design a facility that has the requisite number of toilets, the requisite number of showers, uh, 
the storage space and so on. Um, and indeed, if, uh, if we do stick to that proposal, then it's certain that we're not going to unpick the other arrangements. And I do note, Lord Mayor, that um, uh, the uh, a proponent of the PAC proposal was tagged in a Facebook post about this development with the comment, um, here you go, you should have a go now. So it is quite probable that if we start now to change the way in which we've behaved recently with organisations, they will come back to us. They will say, well, hang on a minute, what are you doing with us? You hold us to our footprint. So I'm asking in this Lord Mayor for consistency to ensure that we don't open those floodgates. Thank you, Councillor. So members, you are debating a amendment moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, floor is yours, and then I'll go to Councillor Slum. Uh, yes, I'm glad that uh, the Councillor has pointed this. I would like to apologise to, to the school for the working class comment, implying that we are in some way giving Pulteney Grammar um, a, a, an easier route because it's seen as a not working class school. I think that's offensive and I apologise to Pulteney um, on the council's behalf. Um, I'm happy to um, ask that this be put in the rule book, in the suggestions, because this is the parkland policy. Now we can then decide that we'll allow the Harriers and Pulteney Grammar some largesse and increase it when they prove the need for that. But our hard and fast rules, Megan's um, got a good brain for that, is our policy is that when we amalgamate, we mimic uh, the same footprint. Now that, that is something that we hammered out over years and years and we've been proud of when we've been, a, that the whole point of amalgamation was to reduce the footprint if possible. It wasn't meant to make the footprint three times larger. Now it might be that it's twice as large, if my maths is very good, but it may be that we do uh, envisage that and that is the final result, but it shouldn't be our starting point. Our starting point is saying this amalgamation policy in our parkland policy is to reduce the footprint uh, and to amalgamate the buildings. Um, I also, um, having been away when this was first discussed, noticed there was a suggestion that classrooms would be in this new building. Now I see no reference to that in the reports and um, I see the headmistress shaking her head. So, Councillor, uh, uh, I'll assist you, you were absent, you. it was erroneous. It was, okay, well I'm very glad that because that, that usage is, is clearly uh, not one that we would envisage and the public would envisage at all. But I'm happy that uh, with this, um, this motion and I urge you to support. <coughs> So members, you are debating an amendment. Councillor Slama. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, always happy to look at um, minimising build form on the parklands. However, sitting sitting on Apple and sitting on, on DAP, I've learned the thing called design standards. So the question I've got to uh, the administration through you, Chair, is, is would it be possible to even achieve a, 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 the, the exact same footprint in light of the design standards that are at hand? See, I'll take that as a question. Can I refer that to you? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Look, I understand it would be difficult for the project to be viable if it's constrained to the um, footprint that's already in place. But that's not to say it can't be done, and I think we, the, some further work would need to be undertaken in looking at all the options and come back to you with that. Okay, thank you. Look, on that note, I, I can't support uh, this amendment at all. Um, I'm pretty sure that work has already been done and what we've got is is pretty well where it needs to be to work in line of the design standards. But I might be wrong now, understanding that they are taking into consideration the reduction in space, I think it'd be too limiting to say we have to match it square metre to square metre. So uh, I can't support it based on technicality. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I will go to Councillor Abbeyard, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, just to, I just want to make a couple of uh, a couple of comments. So I guess the first thing to ask is, if this was a private enterprise putting in an application to occupy 
a parkland in the city or to increase their image across the parkland in the city? The answer from this council would be a direct clear no. I mean, that's been something that we've definitely been very consistent on for a very long time. Uh, I think I've enjoyed myself listening to Councillor Martin spend most of his time reading what you said instead of what he thought, which is a bit of a challenge as well, because he hasn't quite defined the context at which that has occurred. And I think the important thing there to note is this is an existing school, already bordering the South Parklands versus a new facility that someone else is looking at or applying or getting state funding for, et cetera, et cetera. And I think if this city is serious about increasing its city population and attracting families to come and live in the city of Adelaide, utilise buildings which are being built all along uh, the South Terrace facing the South Parklands, then this council needs to be serious about how we provide for educational spaces and safe spaces for those schools and the students to attend, which also parts of activating the parkland. Um, and this is a challenge because we're experiencing this now. This is a new phenomenon. We've got a botanic garden school being built. We have had probably the first one of all, the Adelaide High discussion and expanding their footprint across the parklands on the west western side of the city. This is gonna continue to happen. And I am concerned that our parklands will be impacted over a longer period of time, a decade or two, where we'll see more propositions coming through with built form. So I am very concerned about that, but we need to keep in mind that we are dealing with a school. Uh, we are dealing with existing amenities that require improvement. I can't go straight away down the line of completely excluding uh, to the motion that we have before us today, uh, excluding any opportunity for the school and for our administration to work together to improve the current structure and come back. I think what Councillor Martin has moved, uh, to be honest, uh, will end up with the same status quo um, and we will end up with a no result um, as a result of this. Slight improvements, but no, no big improvements to be, to be able to attract those families into the city and their children to those schools. So look, I think the halfway house in this is to default back to the original uh, and for us to give the opportunity for the school, which have heard us for the first time today, uh, what our thoughts are on this development, how to reduce the footprint in line with our APLA, um, with our APLA advice that has come through to council very clearly. And I think through that, I would urge administration to bring that to a workshop for us to have a more in-depth discussion, to have the school, to have the planners there, uh, to provide more insight to councillors and give them comfort on what they're doing because this needs to be a community space uh, and it needs to be inclusive with low level of impacts on parkland. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Wilkinson, followed by Councillor Corbell Moore. Councillor Wilkinson, you were debating a amendment. Members? Yes. Um, I'll just ask the mover and the seconder whether they might consider um, rather than the um, ensure no increase in the footprint of the building to change the um, word refine to revise and then add significantly reduce and so minimise. This is not as absolute as saying matching the existing well, Councillor, before you debate that, I'm going to now look to the mover of the amendment, which is Councillor Martin. Are you comfortable with what Councillor Wilkinson is proposing as a variation to your amendment? I'm just looking at my seat. I'm happy with that. Yes, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we'll just capture those words, if we could, please. If you could look to the screen, please, Councillor Wilkinson, or certainly Councillor Martin. And so minimise, so, and so minimise the size and impact. And so minimise. And what's been stated out, unstep, so it comes back into it. And then remove, ensure no increase of comfort. Now, Councillor, for the benefit of all and sundry, before which time I then look for general comfort for the room for the variation, could you read that out in its entirety, please? Point three. Request that Poultney Grammar School and the Adelaide Harriers Athletic Club further revise the concept design to significantly reduce and so minimise the size and impact of the current footprint. So Councillor, is that of the current or on the current? No, of, I of think the current? Of the building. 
of the building. So the bit about footprint comes out of the buildings. Yep. And and provide two alternative <coughs> concepts. Okay, so now that we've captured that wording, Councillor Martin, you are comfortable with that, Councillor Moran, you are comfortable with that as a variation to Councillor Martin's um, motion uh, amendment. Members, I look to the floor for general comfort. Do I have it? Just a point of order. Okay. A question? Or a question here. Thank you, Councillor Lucas. Can assist. What is the difference between the original request of reduction the size and impact of design and provide two alternative concepts to this motion? Yeah, but it's simple. Yeah. So is it that word? That's yeah. what I want to ask. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> okay. okay. So thank you. We now have a motion as varied members. I, I took a general level of comfort from the room for that. Councillor Abbey had one question. There were no further Am questions about it. Yes, you are. So you now have a motion, an amended motion as varied. Councillor Wilkinson, floor is yours. Uh, yeah, I think having looked at the uh, plans and what's trying to be accommodated, I, I don't think it would be possible to accommodate what needs to be provided by the school within the existing footprint. And therefore, I don't think we, there would be any point in asking to, to do it exactly the same footprint. But there certainly is plenty of measure. There's something like 40 toilets or something within the facility. So, so there's plenty of scope to reduce or to vary it and reduce the impact, but I don't think it'd be realistic to ask it to, to match the size of existing facilities, which are some standard in their overall size in themselves. So it's a more realistic request. Okay, now Deputy Old Mayor, did you have a question with regards to the variation or did you want to debate the amendment? You want to debate? Can I put you in the queue for debating? I've got a list at the moment, if I could please deal in. Councillor Corbell Moore, we are debating an amendment as moved by Councillor Martin. Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I've just got a couple of questions from the administration because Councillor Martin has um, referred to a letter which I haven't um, actually had a chance to read. I'm not going to read it now. I want to um, ask the administration if the information that he's mentioned in there is correct in that um, PAC's facilities in Park 9 um, did not have an increase in the footprint of the buildings that were demolished um, to make way for the new development. And also in regards to Park 24 Comments Club, again, similar situation, old um, buildings needing to be upgraded, let's demolish them, new proposal for, um, for the facilities, multi-purpose community activation, future-proofing the needs of um, the sporting requirements. What happened in those instances? Because Councillor Martin saying there was no increase in the facilities, the footprint of those proposed building facilities. Thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore, CEO. Claire Mopla, can you help out next? Uh, through the presiding mem uh, member, from memory, um, the Comets uh, proposal in part 24. Um, went through a couple of iterations, um, but it was held to um, footprint um, in terms of reduction of around three buildings to consolidate into one, and the footprint was the same. Um, I'd need to um, double check the Prince Alfred. That was um, a year or so ago, um, but that went through a couple of iterations as well. Um, but from memory, I'd need to just double check that one. Okay, look, I, I, this, it, at an initial glance, we, as in the administration, have worked together with Pulteney Grammar and Adelaide Harriers Athletic Club to develop this proposal. And this is standard process. This is what happens. We go through a couple of rounds where Apple gets to see something and it's brought back because we need to have a look at the review designs. And then it goes through the consultation process and the public get a chance to have their say on the proposal. So I, I recognise that we're working with the proponents and I think this original motion, which I seconded, was seeking to reduce the footprint, which is what we want to see. But to, to I, I personally don't think that we can achieve what we want to <coughs> by minimising it to the existing footprint of the buildings that are there. Each, each of these proposals that come to us need to be considered on their own merit, case by case basis. So the facilities that are in um, related to Pulteney Grammars and um, Adelaide Harriers Athletics Club are very different from the other proposals that we've seen with regards to the Commerce Club and PAC. 
and I'm happy with the original motion, which is simply to reduce. Our administration continues to work with the proponents. It comes back to APLA, it comes back to council. We go to consultation, the public get to have their say, and we make our final decision. We don't need necessarily to be so prescriptive. I think the message is coming through loud and clear that we want to see quite a drastic reduction, but we also want to ensure that there is um, the facilities will cater to the needs of the future needs of the communities. That was the point of my amendment. Uh, yes, so members. That, what you're talking about. Uh, well said, Councillor. So, members, can I assist you with your debate? You started with the original motion. It was then amended by Councillor Martin. It was then varied by Councillor Wilkinson with the support of the Chamber. The variation effectively has taken it away from a prescriptive square metre, four square metre quid pro quo, and it's taken it something a little closer to where you started with your original motion. So that's where you are now, members. That's where your debate sits right now. That's what you're debating in terms of Councillor Martin's motion, uh, amendment as varied. So members, can I now look to the Deputy Lord Mayor? Now, I don't know, just a point of order, I don't think you should have accepted that as a variation because it's a substantive difference from the original motion. It's all, there is a change of position here from the initial mover to what the variation is, a significant change. No. Councillor, if you disagree, you can vote against it. Count DLM. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I uh, recall how much um, angst we put um, comments through in trying to achieve uh, the same footprint for design. Um, I do actually think, uh, thank uh, Principal Anne Dunstan for being here tonight and listening to the debate. Um, APLA and the Council have tried uh, very hard to contain development on the parklands. That, that is first and foremost what we're trying to do so that uh, the consolidation of the buildings that are there um, uh, look at that footprint. Um, I am happy to support this amendment um, with the view that it is actually going to come back through a design process and working with the administration, um, noting APLA's advice, of course, um, and understanding that really what we're trying to achieve is a, a really good outcome that absolutely minimises the impact and the footprint on the parklands. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abia. Well, now, this, is my, this is my point, Lord Mayor. It's a significant variation from the debate, and I didn't get to debate his motion. I debated a motion that said a quid for quote. That's the problem I've got. I know, but that, that is the process, Councillor. As unfortunate as that may be, it was a variation which was accepted by the Chamber. The amended motion thus was varied. So, members, do we have any further debate? <coughs> Councillor Farahan, you're debating the amendment. Yes, and I do support the amendment. Lord Mayor, um, I personally, along with your good self, toured all the buildings um, in this particular parkland, and there is absolutely no question that they need to be rubbed out and something new built. Um, however, <laughs> as has been mentioned before, we do need to be very mindful um, that we do attempt to consolidate when, when we um, are looking at new plans and that there isn't an in, a significant increase in the footprint. This design on page 111 is quite beautiful. Um, however, I am very aware that it is a much larger area and this, this amendment um, basically says, yes, we do need to revise it to ensure that it is appropriate and publicly acceptable. The current footprint, I believe, is just, it looks to me to be way too big. Uh, and we've, made, we've asked other, other sporting clubs to go back and refine and reduce their footprints. And, um, and it's, it's very difficult for us to err from that. I think the amendment will actually say, will actually give um, Pulteney, Pulteney um, School the opportunity um, to review this so that it does come back with something smaller but something equally as beautiful as what's presented here. So members, we're debating the amendment. So members, before I hand you back to the move of the amendment, I'm going to speak to this matter. Members, <coughs> so that I'm very clear, the <coughs> I believe that the original amendment 
moved by Councillor Martin, before which time it was varied, was in all probability overly prescriptive for the reason that we don't know whether that would even work for Pulteney Grammar School. We don't. But nor would I want to see a plan in the future which showed a 50 square metre reduction on what was proposed in the original which came to Apple. Because clearly, members, in my own view, a more substantive or substantial reduction in that footprint is warranted. So I wouldn't have been supportive of Councillor Martin's original amendment, <clears throat> until which time it was varied by Councillor Wilkinson, who has steered this amendment into a middle ground, which gives us a little more comfort and gives the staff a little more clarity in terms of a token reduction in the original plan was not acceptable. However, noting that we're not fully informed about precisely what the needs of the school are, we could look at something which could be more accommodating, which could be a little bit bigger than the um, uh, quid pro quo arrangement. And if we look at our form members, Park 25, the footprint on Park 25 was considerably larger than the consolidation of buildings. Park 24 was a neat quid pro quo, but we weren't able to establish that until which time we knew in that case in Park 24, whether that was facilities which would work for the two institutions which were running them, and they did. And they were happy to do it, and it was funded, and the project is now being constructed. So I think this has moved us into a sensible position. Members, my own view, I put you back to the mover of the amendment as varied, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor, and I do thank Councillor Wilkinson for that amendment. Uh, I think more people can uh, get on board as a consequence of that. Um, but I do disagree with your comments about a reduction of just 50 square metres. I, I, I support the amendment of uh, Councillor Wilkinson because it is different to the original to the extent that so it it's says... a variation, Councillor. Your variation, amendment, I beg Councillor Wilkinson, a variation to your amendment. That it says significant, and that is important. Now, to address the point that it's not possible to create something unless it grows is not accurate. And, and indeed, I would remind uh, members that at Park 25, the SACA uh, uh, existing footprint, uh, when they came to us with the design, was 1,084 square metres. We endorsed and they built a facility of 370 square metres. Now, I'm not a fan of that building, Lord Mayor. I think it looks like a surf club. But having said that, it accommodates everything that SACA needs to do, and it's reduced their footprint by two thirds. And in that space is 240 square metres of shared social space, five public toilets, and a total floor area of 1,200 square metres. This on 370 square metres, where Pulteney Grammar is asking for 572 to be expanded up to almost a thousand square meters. There is a significant difference. And I think it's possible for the school to accommodate all of its requirements and those of the Harriers in a footprint that is much closer to the original than uh, is proposed. And indeed, uh, perhaps they should have a look at what's possible on a footprint by having a look at Park 25 and what's there on 370 square metres. Lord Mayor, uh, we, we are here to do the best for the parklands as well as for those people who hold leases. And I think we would be doing the best for the parklands by adopting this proposal as amended by Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, members. So you have an original motion as amended by Councillor Martin, as varied by Councillor Wilkinson with consent of the floor. I put the amendment before you. Those in favour? Those against? So members, we now have the original motion as amended. Do I have any further debate from anyone who has not already debated on the original motion? I don't, so I'm going to go back to the original mover, which was Councillor Slama. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And just in summing up, the reason I didn't support that amendment was I didn't want to see a three-storey building put onto a 500, 500 square metre block. Um, I thought that design was smart, was elegant, was futuristic, was 2018, accompanied everything we needed to do. Yes, it took extra footprint on the ground, but it gave us 
gave us a couple of spots where people could walk under the building, sit on top of the building with a green, green roof on. It was a really, really good design. And what, what I'm fearful of is that, again, significantly reducing that footprint, the only way to go is down or up to get the same outcome. And I don't like that, but that's my, my own thoughts. Thank you, Councillor. So, members, I put the amended motion now before you to revote on the substantive. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you, members. Members, I will take you directly onto item 12.7, which is to delegate authority to our CEO with regards to the Central Market Arcade leases, page 115. You've got a recommendation to delegate and authorise. <coughs> Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Hender. <coughs> Councillor Abiyad, do you wish to speak to the matter? No, 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 no. Councillor Hender, do you wish to speak to the matter? Um, I need to say I'm, I'm very happy with the motion as it is, and I just wanted to say that um, we are in negotiations there. We've given our administration um, some very clear instructions about the parameters within, within which they can negotiate. Um, I I'm just want to indicate my willingness if those parameters needed to change for the administration to come back to us for some more scope. So I just wanted to make it clear that, that um, in my view, that might, may be appropriate as things tighten up if we get closer to the deadlines and due dates. Thank you, Councillor Hendon. Members, do I have any further debate with regards to this matter? Councillor Rabia? Just a softly, softly approach. I think it's really important to take into account that um, this will have a significant impact on some of the businesses in the area um, and we just need to be mindful of how that's managed uh, and it's important. I think what we'll deliver on the long term is very important, but I think in the short term delegating that authority, we're just going to be making sure that uh, uh, we'll be as reasonable as we can. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I put this matter before you 12.7. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. 12.7. Members, item 12.8, which is 2018-2019 events and festival sponsorship recommendations, page 118, calls for... Can I, are there any conflicts associated with this matter, Deputy Lord Mayor? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm on the Adelaide Festival Centre Trust Board. Deputy Lord Mayor, we could take this in parts. There are five um, separate items there. I would be very happy with the consent of the Chamber to take three of them and then we'll deal with the two to which you've got a conflict um, separately if you wish. So members, can I look to you then for a mover with regards to 1.1, 1 1.4 and 1.5? Moved by Councillor Moran. Happy to move as you suggest. Thank you. Man. Councillor Martin had his hand up second. Councillor um, Clarehan. So, members, do I have any debate about 1.1, 1 1.4, 1 and 1.5? I don't, so I'm going to put this directly before you. Those in favour? Those against? We've carried those three items. Deputy Lord Mayor. Now, members, this is item 1.2, or subset 1.2 and 1.3, two matters regarding the Adelaide Festival Centre Trust. I'll look for a separate motion. Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Hender. I'm going this side of the room, Councillor Clarehan. And any debate about those two items, members? Councillor Abiyad, summing up? I put this matter before you, members. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. So if we could please invite the Deputy Lord Mayor back into the Chamber. We have now effectively covered all five of those items and we have effectively dealt with item 12.8. We've got musical chairs here at the front of the Council Chamber. Welcome back, DLM. Members, I'll take you to item 12.9, which is City of Music laneway naming, a report to approve request and note, page 122. Councillor Abiyad, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abiyad, do you wish to speak to this matter? Was that my right one? Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I'll make it. Um, 
Um, I'd just like to uh, thank administration for turning this around quite quickly. Um, um, as we uh, talked about it in council previously, it would be great for us to actually uh, be able to consider some of our great musicians, uh, particularly being a UNESCO City of Music, and that we actually start stamping the ground in the city accordingly. So thank you to administration for putting this through. Thank you, DLM. Members, do I have any further questions, queries or debate? Councillor Wilkinson? Uh, yeah, here we've got a situation where there's an unnamed laneway for which a name's been given to, and I'm quite supportive of the uh, endeavour uh, to recognise music identities for naming an unnamed thing, but I wouldn't necessarily feel the same way about changing the name of an existing laneway from something that's been, you know, 150 years or whatever to changing. I think that would be confusing and perhaps disrespecting the history of the place if you change that. So I think it should be reserved for, for naming unnamed laneways as opposed to chopping and changing names of streets, which I think is problematic. Thank you. CEO, will you take that as a comment, please? Thank you. Councillor Martin, you wish to debate this matter? Uh, yeah, look, just briefly to speak to uh, uh, Councillor Wilkinson's thought. He's absolutely right, Lord Mayor. This is a circumstance where a place has no name, and it would seem to me, and I know it's on the list as one of the possible contenders to be named after a, a music, uh, an identity from uh, the music industry, but it would seem to be the best choice. It, it would be uncontroversial. And indeed, the option uh, that is available for that laneway is to name it after the bloke around the garage there in the 20s and 30s. So uh, maybe this is the time to consider, you know, Barnsley Way or Shorrick Avenue or Cold Chisel Place or something. I, it would be uncontroversial. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, members, any further debate on this matter, i.e. Councillor Corbell Moore? Well, well, may I just, I think the discussion so far, I agree with um, all of the remarks that have been said so far. Just to say, I think the choice um, of the laneway off Solomon Street is a really good one. I have visited and um, I have seen it in person and it's it's such a tiny little space and it's sandwiched between two buildings and it has been used, I think, as um, a space as you know, a public urinal, unfortunately. So to turn it into something um, which could potentially become activated and place making, um, just really rejuvenating the space will be a really good thing for that little laneway and all of the businesses in that area and city safety, et cetera, that I suppose. Thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore. No further debate, members. I'm handing you back to your mover, Councillor Abia. You can sing your sum up. <laughs> Members, I put the song before you. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you, Members. Item carried. Members, I look to the item 12.10, which is a special music event. Councillor Moran, which is Adelaide Oval number 2, page 129. Now, Members, you need, uh, Councillor Moran, you need to make a choice. I do. Uh, either three or four, which is neither or. I move number one, number two, and number three, the second part, declines consent in its capacity as landlord. So you are moving to decline, which is the second part, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so members will need a seconder for this matter to proceed. Councillor Martin is seconding, Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. Uh, well, as with the Midnight Oil concert, I mean, the arguments that we had there are the same arguments that I'll that, uh, we'll bring forth tonight. Uh, unfortunately, that, in that circumstance, we were faced with a, um, an event that the tickets had already been sold, sold for, and so we were put in a very difficult situation. I assume, uh, look, looking at this report, that is not the case. Oval number two was not meant for major music events because it has no sound attenuation. The ironclad agreement with the Oval, as we pointed out last time, uh, was that all the uh, concerts, the major concerts, be, um, be planned for inside the stadium because that protected the um, hospitals, the um, residents around that area from the noise. And that the oval number two would only be used for minor, small events 
that would not cause any of the, the problems that the large concerts have, and I assume this is a large concert. Um, <laughs> so I think although a lot of the media are critical of the North Adelaide people who desire to sleep occasionally um, as the noise goes up the River Valley, I think this affects more than just a couple of, um, to quote, silver, silver tails in North Adelaide. This affects the Women's and Children's Hospital, it affects the Memorial Hospital, it affect, affects all the residents in North Adelaide as the sound does travel up that river corridor. And that is what the council and indeed the Oval um, uh, authority accepted. There was no argument in the years that we hammered out these ironclad agreements with the uh, stadium authority. They, there was no pushback from them. They understood our reasons and, um, and happily uh, wrote in our lease agreement, uh, in the, the agreement that they would not hold any amplified music, uh, that it would be treated as more a village green type um, type of area. Now, when we heard about the Midnight Oil concert, we also heard that, um, I'm not sure how true it was, that there was a whole list of concerts that were coming up after after that that had been promised. Uh, we were told that wasn't the case, but cl then clearly some have snuck through. So I don't think we should resile or feel at all embarrassed of being the fun police. Uh, we're not. Um, the oval itself was designed and, and has a good attenuation of noise and we encourage that the events are in there. Um, we understand that the, uh, the authority needs to squeeze every dollar out of the oval to pay some of the enormous debt that it causes. We love the oval. North Adelaide embraces its use. Um, so it's nothing about, about, about that. Um, but this is not what Oval Number Two was meant to be used for. The government, no, the government at the time knew that. The Australian Management Authority happily accepted that and never argued the point. So I think they should just stick to their agreement. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin, you seconded Councillor Moran's motion. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I endorse those uh, those comments. Um, it is curious that the SMA is constantly trying to break out of the walls of the Oval, despite whatever the original agreements were. First, it was the uh, Midnight Oil concert that was mentioned. Then there were detailed plans that were shared with Council for an amphitheatre for entertainment along Pennington Terrace. There are a couple of other proposals that uh, I'm not allowed to talk about because of Council confidentiality rules. And th there is also the, uh, the bars and the entertainment that they were proposing at the North Gate and at the East Gate at the Oval. Uh, in fact, a large group of uh, residents and the council are involved in an action in uh, court that will go before Just uh, Justice Gilchrist uh, in the first week of August. And the locals are arguing that they, they don't want stadium pubs in the park, whether that's to service a concert or uh, just simply for entertainment or bars. And, and they're saying, that the community land management plan for that area does not support this kind of activity, this kind of concert or, or the selling of alcohol. It is in fact uh, one of the arguments that's used in the documents here tonight where the administration is saying, well, it doesn't say that you can't have concerts either. Now, in the end, it will be uh, the court that will decide that, but I think it would be a bad one for us to be approving this on one hand while standing up in court arguing with the residents that the, um, uh, the the bars and entertainment shouldn't go ahead in respect of the north gate and the east gate so uh, i think we should be saying no to this proposal residents do deserve a break they are uh, troubled by noise as councillor moran said they love the oval they go to the footy like everybody else but when it comes to rock concerts there, and I know there's talk of Elton John and that's not necessarily a rock concert. Although Lord Mayor, I do, I do see that it makes sense to have an Elton John concert there because it's very close to Helping Hand and it would be easy to travel between the two venues. But um, uh, having said that Lord Mayor, it still provides a, uh, a noisy outcome for residents. And um, the best thing we can do is to adopt the motion as proposed by Councillor Moran, that is to say no, and then to go through the process of having a look at the community land management plan. And then we can make decisions based on policy, not on interpretation of what might or might not be said in the community land management plan. Thank you, 
Councillor Martin, now Councillor Hender had her hand up uh, third, so to speak, then it was Councillor Rabiot, then Councillor Wilkinson. So Councillor Hender. Well, Mayor, I'd like to have a crack at proposing an amendment which I circulated earlier in the day, um, which is actually the, to um, adopt paragraphs one, two and three A effectively. And there's an additional paragraph four. So um, what I'm proposing, I'm going to seek a second. Councillor, I'll ask you to read it, please, because okay, on so first glance, it might be ultra vires with regards to the original motion. So can you just read what you're looking to achieve, please, for your fellow members, and I'll make a uh, Well, then perhaps what, me, what I need to do is, if that's the case, I need to indicate that if the um, original motion fails, then I'll be proposing this. Okay, it is ultra vires what you're looking to achieve. So, Councillor, you can speak against this motion, should you wish to do now, and okay. foreshadow what you may do later. So if I may do that, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm, I, you will see in, in, in your screens the motion that I foreshadow that I'll be uh, proposing if this motion doesn't get up. Um, uh, we had an extensive workshop on this, Lord Mayor, and I think Councillor um, Moran may have been away when that happened. So we got um, quite a bit of advice and information about the difficulties uh, with this event. And, uh, and what we were told at that workshop was that we had previously been a midnight oil concert there and there have been no complaints about noise from residents in North Adelaide. Um, there have been no complaints about the event, full stop. Um, so that being the case, um, uh, I don't think we're going to be upsetting anybody by having a, a, a concert here, um, certainly not in terms of noise and, and difficulties with noise. So then it comes down to whether it's a good idea and um, at, and we're a city of music. Um, this is a one-off event and what we were advised at the workshop is that if this doesn't happen in this location it's likely that it won't happen in Adelaide at all. This is a, an international concert, it's on tour, it's a final concert, we don't know who it is but it's, it is the sort of concert that normally flies straight over the top of Adelaide so that you see it in Melbourne or you go to Perth to see it um, but it doesn't happen here. We are are lucky that our parklands are lovely enough to have attracted this, this particular concert here and I think we should grab the opportunity. That said, I think we also need to fully understand what should happen in this site and that's why I'm going to include a new paragraph four if, I, if this doesn't get up and we, my alternative motion has a crack and that is that we bring on the, um, the revision of our community land management plan which as I understand it was first last looked at in 2009 to have a look at it in the light of a completely new environment. It was last revised, I'm advised, before the uh, Adelaide Oval was redeveloped. So we need obviously to revisit our community land management plan. That will give us an opportunity to have proper consultation about what should happen in that space, what that, what that piece of land should be used for. And, uh, and these two concerts, the one that we've already had and the one that this one might have, will help us to, uh, I suppose, inform that debate. That's your so, three minute limit, Councillor. That's my intention if we don't get up. That's it. So you're speaking for three minutes. Thank you. So uh, next, do you have a question, Councillor Martin? Yes, I do, Lord Mayor. I, I understand the intent of uh, the second part of uh, Councillor Hender's proposal, that is that there is a review of the community land management plan. Why can't that be incorporated with the decline? Because you know, she chose for it not to be. Oh, I see. You, you don't want to have a decline as well as a community <coughs> land management plan review. Well, like both Correct. It would have been ultra, um, councillor or councillors, it would have been ultra virus. So, no. uh, uh, councillor Abia. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I will not be supporting a decline on this. Uh, we are talking about Tuesday, the 19th of November, 2019, for one night between 6 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. For four and a half hours, we're going to have music, God forbid, in Adelaide Oval 2, where 13 to 14,000 people are going to descend on our city. And I'd like to see Councillor Martin explain to his ratepayers in North Adelaide on O'Connell Street how those 13,000 clients will not benefit those businesses on the street. We keep hearing from councillors how O'Connell Street is falling apart, things are not working, traders are screaming, things need to be improved. Here we have 13,000 people at the doorsteps and we're going to say no because there's noise but then there wasn't any noise complaints at the previous at the previous event it's still 
So I again, Lord Mayor, I have no idea what we're debating here for a good half an hour to decline an event that delivers on a strategic plan of council, which is a city of music, that delivers on economic development to a main street and to a city, that delivers on visitations and tourism to the city of Adelaide, that delivers on national and international reputation for the city of Adelaide, on the back of some discomfort for four hours. You live in Adelaide. On four hours, I live in the city, I sleep in Adelaide, there's a big difference. Um, but this is the challenge, Lord Mayor, four and a half hours where we're sacrificing. If people are sleeping at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, I can understand there's some discomfort there, but we need to mitigate noise levels um, and we need to manage that through policy, but we need to accept that this is what we do as a city. So I completely reject the motion before us and as stipulated before by Councillor Hender, I look forward for this motion to fail or be reasonable for it to fail and hopefully we'll be able to support a more reasonable motion that delivers on good outcomes for city and right place. Thank you, Councillor Aviad. Councillor Corbell Moore, then followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, with regards to the Midnight Oil music event in October last year, 7.6, there were no customer complaints received by the City of Adelaide or Adelaide Oval regarding the event. Oh. Councillor Martin got, got all the calls. Switchboard was open. Okay, well, well councillors, please. Through the process of our customer service centre and Adelaide Ovals, there, there were no customer complaints. Um, and I'm sure there was a lot of positive social media attention generated, and there was a lot of um, businesses that benefited from people coming into the city that wouldn't or ordinarily wouldn't have come into the city for the Midnight Oil event. And this is going to be a similar kind of event. It will put Adelaide on the map. Like Councillor Hender said, an event, um, an artist like this wouldn't necessarily be coming to Adelaide and they've chosen to come here, which is a really positive thing. And I mean, based on the success of what we've seen previously, whilst it was controversial, there were no complaints recorded through our customer service centre. That's really interesting to me. Um, and, and I mean, it, this comes on the back of us just naming a laneway in celebration of us being a city of music. I, I just, I think we have to, I've, I really think, I feel really strongly about this. We need to support this. I won't be supporting um, this motion. With my, with my strongest intent that this is going to be good for the city overall. Thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I um, uh, am not supportive of the uh, endeavours by the State Management Authority to extend their bar operations north of the um, north of the thing, which basically damages businesses people like the Lion Hotel, the Cathedral Hotel, the North Adelaide Hotel that were meant to benefit from the thing. I see that just as the State Management Authority basically corralling all the, all the business for themselves. And I don't think that's fair on our North Adelaide um, uh, pubs and, and restaurants for them to do that. However, I see this as a, um, and, and I was on council at the time when we were setting the, um, the state of the, um, the rules with the State Management Authority, and this oval was never earmarked for this sort of activity. Um, and I note that there is no consideration to Council for the use of this activity, which um, my view is that this is, uh, obviously it's, it's going to be a from time to time one-off type event, and obviously it's a significant artist of international repute coming, we don't know who it is, but um, given that it's a uh, it's an occasional one-off type of uh, request that's going to come with us, um, I feel that um, uh, really the problem is is that the original ground rules that were set with the State of Management Authority didn't entertain this, but if we are going to entertain it, then it shouldn't be for nothing. We shouldn't be, you know, there'd be a two and a half million dollar ticket take on the sale of this concert to 14,000 people. And sort of, I've looked up what the um, ticket prices were for the Midnight Oil, and this is probably going to be more expensive tickets than that. So um, uh, I foreshadow that um, if, if 
Councillor Hender moves her thing, I move an amendment that um, we look at charging something like, say, 10% of ticket take as, as, a, as a fee for the use of Adelaide Oval 2 for this purpose. That way there is um, a, um, uh, a dividend for the ratepayers. Uh, that's actually a fairly fair commercial sort of um, um, amount to be, be charging. And then it's obviously just proportionate to the amount of tickets to the sale. And that way the event can happen. And I don't think that prejudices our position about the permanent thing, because that's quite a different thing, something that's happening uh, on a regular basis as opposed to on an occasional basis that this is. So I'll be foreshadowing that motion. Hopefully people will be supportive of that uh, endeavour so that we actually get some, some dividend because the Stadium Management Authority asking for something quite outside what was originally signed up to in 2009 when we uh, established the uh, Adelaide Oval um, parameters. So members, do I have any further debate? I don't. I'm going to go back to the mover, Councillor Moran. I can't understand why we're arguing differently for what is presumably an Elton John concert. So we argued very strongly and in a united fashion uh, against um, Midnight Oil um, and said the only reason... Councillor, that, that would be speculation and this matter is confidential as to who the artist may or may not be. No, I'm, I'm just speculating. You are speculating. Uh, I have no idea who it is. But um, as I said, if one believes the rumours, it might be Elton John. Um, we stood as a pretty united council. I don't know what went on at this little workshop, Bizzo, while I was away. Um, but uh, we stood very strongly against Midnight Oil, saying this was not the use of the oval that we anticipated. It wasn't as though that it's a terra nullis about the use of um, oval two. We were very clear that that was not to be used for concerts because of the sound attenuation going up the hill. And I can assure you, as my ward councillors and myself, we got a lot of complaints. It's a little bit like Hutt Street. I think people eventually just give up. Um, I also rather challenged the administration's report that there were none because I have emails of people that ask the sounds to be checked and um, back and forth and I will look those up. There were a lot of complaints. Um, I think it's irrelevant, um, Councillor Abbott, really whether it's at 10.30, it's the principle of the thing. We said no major concerts. You know, you don't get much more major than somebody like Elton John. Um, or Midnight. Councillor Moran, are you going to continue to speculate? I am speculating. But we, we must assume that it's a big concert of some sort. Now, why can't they have the concert in the Oval? That is what we agreed. The sides reflect the sound back. And it's not just a few people in Jeffcott Street. As I said, it is the Women's and Children's Hospital. And I can assure you, if it is a, a concert of the like of Elton John, which you could hear very easily in my sitting room, and I don't live in Jeffcott Street, when it was inside the Oval. One can only imagine how loud it's going to be uh, that sort of concert if it wasn't. But there were complaints about Midnight Oil. Not that it's a very small suburb and a very um, patient suburb. And I think really when the two ward councillors and area councillors that live in that area, and I think it's rude to say that you sleep in Unley, Hassam, but it is correct to say that people that live, not, not, not just because you live in Unley, but rude because you don't live in North Adelaide, to say that you have no say in it, of course you have a say in it. But we do live there, this is our community, and if North Adelaide was always saying no and always being belligerent, as the media says, then one could understand, but it's not. It's patient. It puts up with a lot of noise, recognising that it is upwind from the oval. So when we do, when the councillors that live in the area and do get the complaints say, hang on, this isn't what we agreed to, um, I think you should listen to us. I certainly listen to you when it's something down south and it's something central. But I have noticed a pattern of not listening to us in North Adelaide, and we're saying no. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Motion fails. Councillor Handy, you foreshadowed. The floor Sorry, is yours. I move the motion as foreshadowed. <coughs> put that on the screen and then I'll confirm the wording and we'll look for a second. Councillor Slammer has his hand up, but we'll look at the wording first. Councillor Hander, could you please read that out for the benefit of all and sundry, please? Okay, so we know 
now going with the new paragraph two, that is that we consent in our capacity as a landlord and use mandate over number two for a special music event for one night in November 2019. And a new paragraph, and a new paragraph that we undertake a review and update of the 2009 Community Land Management Plan in light of the changes to the site since the development of mandate oval and that the review provide guidance on the future use of mandate oval number two, including frequency and type of use. Thank you, members. You now have a uh, foreshadowed motion before you, moved by Councillor Hander, seconded by Councillor Slama. Councillor Hander, the floor so is yours. I reserve my right, Lord Mayor. You're reserving your right to debate. Councillor Slama. Uh, yeah, no, that is all good, but I'll just add off the topic of the last debate. The, the way this st stage faces is obviously towards the city where the lanes have no names, without mm -hmm. speculating uh, any... any uh, to any bands, Lord Mayor, but having a concert in the Oval, understand sound travels and bounces. So I can understand the North Adelaide residents getting noise over there because it'll bounce out and bounce the other way. This way here, it's got nothing to hit. Go straight across the river towards Adelaide, my ward, and I'm in support of that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, you too, Councillor Slama. Thank you. Uh, now we've got Councillor Wilkinson and Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, as for shadow, I'd just like to read that amendment that I mentioned that um, we had an additional clause um, for a leasing fee in the order of 10% of the ticket tape. Seek a second for that. So let us record, record the wording first. If you look to your screen, please, Councillor Wilkinson, to ensure that what you're putting as an amendment has been With accurately. A lease fee. A commercial lease fee in the order of 10% of the ticket tape. Okay. I'm going to ask our CEO, thank you, Council, before I accept a seconder, I'm just going to check that that's within our remit in order to achieve such thing. CEO? Three of Lord Mayor. Ordinarily, we'd like to provide you with professional advice so you can make an informed decision. I don't think at this time we can provide that advice because there are some complexities to what is being asked. Um, I can ask Tom to give his preliminary comments, but that's my gut thought at the moment. It's difficult for us to sit here uh, unprepared um, for, for such a proposal. Tom. Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, in response to that, um, not knowing what the quantum of 10% would be for a major artist of this nature, noting that it's actually being, it's the promoter who takes the gate receipts and not Adelaide Oval. Um, putting 10% on it, I wouldn't know what that quantum is. My, my advice would be is to certainly seek to enter into a commercial negotiation to seek recognition of the use of the space, but to put a quantum on it, to add, I can't make a comment. I'm happy to amend it to uh, that uh, commercial lease um, terms. You can change the wording. We don't have a seconder at this point in time. So, Councillor, what wording are you looking to achieve? Then I'll look to a seconder. Just picking up on Mr McCready's comment that a, um, that commercial, uh, commercial lease terms be established by the administration. Through you, Lord Mayor, I think if we were to indicate that the Council the Administration seeks to enter into a commercial arrangement for the use of the Oval Number 2 for the purposes of the concert, that would probably suffice and we can try to negotiate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think it's ridiculous that... Councillor, I'll just stop you there. We do need to capture a motion, so uh, and I won't take too much more commentary on this. Councillor, are you agreeable to what has just been shared? Yes. You've taken advice from administration. Are you generally agreeable to what's been shared? If so, that's going to need to be captured. Mr McCready, could you repeat that, please, for the purposes of assisting the councillor? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I will attempt to. Um, in, in response, I'd say that the administration would enter into a commercial no negotiation for the use of Oval number, number 2 for said event or for the event of November 2019. Yep. Uh, is, that, is that an undertaking or is that as a suggested wording? No, that's your motion. Right. So that's now currently being recorded. And I'll 
start this off, I think the members know what's looking to be achieved here. So what we'll do is we'll look for a seconder for the purpose of this to continue. Seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. So the floor is yours. And by the, when you finish debating, I'll get you to triple check the wording, but you can debate now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore, for that seconding. Um, I think it's important that Council um, acts commercially. We act commercially with um, every facet of what Council does. And uh, to, um, to uh, agree to um, uh, a change of, of, of um, plan for how this Adelaide Oval 2 is, is actually operated with no, no consideration at all seems um, extraordinary to me. And, and that's why I think it should just be done on, on commercial terms. We charge people for various uses, functions in the city, and uh, the uh, Stadium Management Authority will obviously be making money out of the uh, out of the event and the, and, the, and the alcohol sales that go with it. Um, so I think it's entirely reasonable for us to um, um, uh, charge some commercial um, fee, fee for that. I think it'd be bizarre for us to, uh, to offer all of that for, for no consideration at all. Okay, so members, you're debating an amendment. There's an amendment of Councillor Hender's original motion. It was The amendment was moved by Councillor Wilkinson. The amendment's been seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you, um, Lord Mayor. It was mainly because Councillor Wilkin um, did mention about the ratepayers and the benefit to the ratepayers. Presumably, this will be quite a profitable event for Adelaide Oval. This is not particularly prescriptive. Um, it's allowing our administration to enter into some discussions. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. We're not boxing us in. Um, we are going to wait and see what the outcome will be. So if you support it, um, we're not boxing ourselves into something, but we are allowing opportunity to potentially have some benefit for our ratepayers um, through remuneration um, from the profits. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Moran debating the amendment, followed by Councillor Martin debating the amendment. Yes, I'll be voting against this. Um, I don't agree with the, law, the uh, parklands having to pay for itself. I think we're whoring out the parklands. Um, it is against our agreement. No amount of money will make up for what we're doing to this parkland. We've said yes to the government twice. Um, I know it's a different government. Um, if I was there, I'd be just scheduling in, in, um, in concerts now because clearly we, la we lay a bow down to them pretty damn quickly. So no, no to any money. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin, you're speaking to the amendment. Yes, I am, Lord Mayor, and I'm just wondering if uh, first I could request that the matter be taken in parts when it comes to the vote. And the reason I ask that is that I, I find it very difficult to accept this amendment of Councillor Wilkinson's, though I agree with him on much. Um, any notion that we would agree to a formula by which events can be uh, staged in the parkland <coughs> is uh, against, I think, the interests of ratepayers in North Adelaide. But additionally, I think it's against the interests of the council to be making these decisions when we have not yet in, entered into a review of the community land management plan. That should be our first uh, goal, that is to review the community land management plan, receive the feedback of, of uh, ratepayers and others throughout the city, and then put together a uh, considered um, use policy for that part of the uh, the parklands. Now, I'm pretty confident that uh, most of the respondents will say no concerts, but nevertheless, it is the way to go. And therefore, um, I would say, uh, let us do it in parts. The other thing, are you going to answer me a little bit? I will if I could, Councillor. So the amendment at the moment, of course, is the inclusion of part five. So when you say, you would like this matter to be the vote on the amendment to the motion to be taken in parts. What exactly are no, you suggesting? I, I, I'm, I'm suggesting that um, I'm happy to have a review of the CLMP. Um, I certainly don't want to uh, consent um, to the use of Adelaide Oval Number Two, but I sorry, Councillor, let, let me assist you. Are you talking about voting on the amendment, or are you talking about voting on the substantive motion as amended? post the vote on the both, amendment. Both, Lord Mayor, sorry, both. Okay, so at the moment what we're debating is an amendment which is really the inclusion of part five. It's the only part you can discuss because that we are discussing an amendment to Councillor Clare, um, Councillor Henders' original motion. 
So I, what I might you do, will do that though for the principal motion for the yes. substantive motion. Once we've dealt with the amendment, yes, but I would need the comfort of, of course, the move of the seconder. But yes, I will. Okay. I will look to the well, in respect of this uh, this motion, no, I can't support it for the reasons that I've outlined, and uh, it can't be understated that noise is a big issue, whether we're getting a cut of the action or not. And uh, I hear Councillor Slama saying, you know, you put the stage this way and the noise goes that way. That is not what happens. The experience in North Adelaide is that the noise goes up the hill into all the re residential areas. And there have been, to provide a, a contextual view of this, there have been a raft of complaints this year. There were something in the order of several dozen breaches of the noise guidelines that were in place during the fringe. And, and residents are still reeling from that. To now impose yet another noise on them is, uh, and look, I'm sorry, uh, 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 Councillor Aviat finds this funny, I know. Um, and it's easy to have a good laugh when you sleep soundly at, at under. But the residents of North Adelaide, the residents of North Adelaide do have trouble sleeping of an evening. Okay, so members, I think we're about to do so. So, Councillor Wilkinson, you're summing up in your amendment. Uh, well, uh, at the very least, I certainly hope that um, the consideration of commercial fees and charges comes into the deliberation over the community land management plan. If we're going to be changing, consider changing the uh, goalposts, um, use a football term. Or Adelaide Oval 2, you know, I think that ought to come into the mix. And and when we go to public consultation, we should be asking them, do you do you want us to be giving away this for free, or do you want us to be doing it on commercial terms? And that question should be put to the community um, how how they would like to see us um, disposing of the use of the park lands. Um, but uh, uh, I uh, my my support of this business is a one-off event, so I'm trying to just get some. Balance on the thing. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Members, you are voting on the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? So, members, the amendment fails. It takes us back to the substantive motion, which was moved by Councillor Hender. Do I have any further debate by any members who have not debated the substantive motion? I don't see any hands. Now, there was a request from the floor to, for this matter to be taken in parts. But we're going to need some direction as to what parts. So, Councillor Martin. I'm, I'm happy, Lord Mayor, for parts uh, one and two to be put together, part three and then part four. Okay, so we're taking it in two parts. Now, I would need the consent of Councillor Hender for this to happen. Councillor Hender, are you happy for parts one and two to be taken as a vote, yep. then parts three and four to be taken as a vote? Councillor Slama, you're the seconder. I need your comfort. I've got it. Okay. Councillor Hender, summing up? Summed up. Summed up. So, members, I put parts one and two before you. Those in favour? Those against? So, parts one and two are duly carried. Members, I put parts three and four as per Councillor Hender's motion before you. No, no, no. I asked for three and four separately. Oh, did you? I understand. All right. So, we're doing this in three parts, so to speak, not two parts. Welcome back, Councillor Antic. Members, we will take part three on its own. Those in favour? Members, can I see your hands, please? So, okay. So part, so part three passes. Sorry, I should say those against part three, my mistake. Okay, so the numbers are there for part three. It carries. Then we take part four. Those in favour for part four. Those against part four. <laughs> <laughs> Members, can I do that again, please? <laughs> Those in favour of part four. Can I see your hands again? Those against part four. Welcome back, Councillor Moran. Uh, members, part four carries. So, members, we've now dealt with part one and two, then part three, and part four separately, so to speak. The motion is carried. Thank you, members. Members, I look to you for 1211, granting of easement for encroachment on Gilly Street, page 136 to approve and authorised. Councillor Hender, you are. Thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor Corbell Moore. Do I have any debate? 
Councillor Handy, you're summing up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? The item carries, which is item 12.11. Members, you've got a report to note, of which you may ask questions, of course. Item 12.12, short-term accommodation discussion paper. I'm in your hands. Do I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Abiyad, as printed, I presume, a report to note. Seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Do I have any debate about this matter, members? Councillor Hendon? Not debate, Lord Mayor, just a quick comment. Um, I, I thank the administration for the report. There are some recommendations or some things that can be achieved, and, and they require some, some consultation and, and uh, cooperation with the state government. I think we do need to bear in mind that, that some of the difficulties, and we've had a presentation from um, uh, from residents, city residents about this, that some of these, uh, the activities that happen in this short stay accommodation are driving people mad, causing deep distress for people who've owned or purchased property in the city and then have party houses operating alongside them. Um, I, I would like to just suggest, Lord Mayor, that if this could possibly get on the agenda of the Capital City Committee or somewhere where we can actually get some quick runs on the board, quick changes, some low-hanging fruit to deal with some of the, the there's some legis potential legislative changes that could make a big difference here. Um, and if we can do that for our, uh, for our residents, then let's do it. I um, could just take that on as a comment. Councillor, I will, and on behalf of Council, what I would do after a discussion with my fellow elected members, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Abiyad, with the Premier and two ministers only this week, um, last week, my mistake, was with regards to that uh, I will take that matter directly to the responsible minister. We, can exp we have Capital City Committee meetings every three months. We can expedite matters quicker. Um, we want to keep the Capital City Committee very strategic in terms of its alignment between the city and the state. So I will take that on behalf of council to the responsible minister. Members, do I have any further debate? Councillor Wilkinson, or should I say questions? Because it is a report to note. Um, yeah, no, I would echo the uh, sentiments of Councillor Hender there and, um, uh, and, and thank the administration for a very good report on, on this matter. It is a serious issue which has the potential to actually jeopardise our endeavours to encourage city living because people talk when they talk about the negative experience of had a city living due to poorly managed short-term accommodation, it, it taints the whole whole notion of city living for people and that's not good for our broad city living agenda. Um, uh, that said, this sort of short-term accommodation provides a different form of accommodation to hotel accommodation. So people looking to stay in a house type of situation, it's different from uh, uh, staying in, in, a, in a hotel room, so uh, it's, it's a different sort of market, I think. Thank you, Councillor. Members to our Councillor. Uh, Lord Mayor, thank you. Look, I, I recognise there's been a lot of um, time and effort put into this discussion paper, and it is a good discussion paper. There are some comments in here um, for, which I'd like to point, pick up on, which is one of them, the internet international and national regulations, what, what's happening overseas and around Australia. The summary comments at 7.3 indicate in Adelaide the use of apartment buildings as service departments does not appear to be a significant issue for long-term residents. This situation may change in the future as the number of apartment buildings increases in the city. And I think um, we, our customer service centre receives some complaints and we handle them through our internal mechanisms. Safe Hall are getting other complaints, recognising that one of the actions is that discussions will continue with Safe Hall, but I think it's important that we do get regular updates around any issues that might arise as a result of <coughs> these service departments and short-term accommodation um, because we really need to keep our finger on the pulse. I do feel within my own community living in an apartment complex in the city that it is a growing issue and that it happening even in strata managed situations where they're struggling to handle these situations, um, let alone on Torrance title. So I, I really feel that it's, it needs to be kept on the agenda. We need to be proactive about it. It's not done and dusted. It needs to be, um, can, we need to continue our discussions as an elected body and administration. Councillors, listening to your debate and taking on board the comments from Councillor Hendra and Councillor Corbell Moore, I, in the first instance on your behalf, will take this matter to the responsible minister. If I need to elevate it on behalf of Council to um, Triple C, 
Um, I certainly will, because I also note, members, that this matter is actually of national significance and is being debated and advocated for by the Council of Capital City Lord Mayors. So this is, there's commonality about this issue right around the nation and it has hit the agenda of triple CLM. So clearly we're not isolated in our concern about some of this. So, Members, do I have any further debate in absence of, I'm going to take you back to Councillor Ambia. Just to sum up, Lord Mayor, look, I think the uh, the plan is very valid and the study is really important, but I think one of the things we need to note as well, it's, it's always the impact of minorities that affect the majority. Um, and this shouldn't start to interfere with city culture. There's a lot of people around the world that look to Airbnb to share the accommodation, to come and visit cities and to do the right thing. Uh, this could not and should not be uh, a penalising measure to disrupting technology that's out there that's supporting the industry and the tourism industry. Um, I note, and I've had the experience also with great players in the city where they've been impacted heavily by this, but like I said, it's really important that we take an approach of an inclusive uh, nature, not one of penalising, and looking at ways to facilitate versus restrict. So I think that's something that we really need to know. Thank you, Councillor Abia. Members, I put this matter to, uh, before you to note. Those in favour? Those against? And members, we've carried item 12.12. .12. Item 12.13, remuneration plan, <coughs> which is a draft submission. Thank you, Page 159, moved by Councillor Abia. Got an amendment to the Okay. Councillor, you would like to move an alternate motion? Yes, Lord Mayor, I think I'd like to move. Um, instead of the words endorse, defer, the draft submission of local government allowances in attachment A to item 12.13 on the agenda to a meeting of the new council post November 2018 and I seek a seconder to speak to this. Uh, Councillor, before I do, and you of course may do this, I'll just seek comment from the CEO, in case I, I presume there's no specific time sensitivity regarding this matter. This matter I don't believe was initiated by us, Councillor, that's why. CEO, before we take this as a mover with a seconder, I'll just refer to the CEO if I could, Councillor Abiyat. CEO. Pretty well, me, yes, I understand. And there is a time sensitivity and if this council wishes to make a submission it would need to do, to do so tonight otherwise it would be the future council but maybe Steve Matheson might help out. Um, three Lord Mayor, the, we've received a letter in relation to this item from the Remuneration Tribunal. Um, they seek its submissions by the 6th of July so I appreciate this is the first time members have seen that we've had a really limited time to respond to that so we brought it straight into tonight's meeting for you to review it. Uh, just is my motion acceptable, CEO? Can we defer it, or do you, are you saying not endorse? Three, Lord Mayor, you can defer, but that would mean we wouldn't make a submission. That's correct. Yeah, that's fine. So it's either this or not endorse. Okay, so I'll move to probably clear where it would be not endorsed. It'll be a matter for the new council to discuss. So I'll move uh, that the draft submission on local government allowance to not be endorsed. In attachment A of 12.3, and as we go, and I'll seek a second. Okay, so Councillor Councillor Slama, you had your hand up, so you're seconding. Thank you. You've got a second. You made a vote. Uh, Lord Mayor, I think in a in a time where we are um, really trying to be tight on our financials as a council uh, to keep our rates frozen in the city of Adelaide, for us to be financially prudent. I think it's really important that we lead by example from the elected body. Um, and I think this is not a timely exercise and it's not one for us to look into and potentially a future council could look into that. I would argue that each and every one of us as elected members serve our city uh, in a way of a passion, uh, not of a way of financial return. Uh, and it gives me some sense of pride uh, that the City of Adelaide uh, councillors and even to some degree the Lord Mayor get paid the least out of every and other capital city in the nation. Uh, we do this with pride, Lord Mayor. We don't do it for financial gain. Uh, and I think it's important uh, that for this council to give a very clear message to its constituents and its ratepayers that not, we're not here for financial gain. And this is not something that I personally support. Um, and it's something that uh, that shouldn't be considered in this uh, in this round of council. Uh, given that this was triggered by our administration, this was not triggered by uh, by any of the elected members in council. That's correct in me assuming that. Uh, and I know there's an opportunity to, to submit 
uh, a report or a submission uh, every four years, to my understanding. So look, there will be an opportunity to explore that later, uh, depending on the community needs. But I think a lot of people are doing it very tough out there. Uh, and as I said before, I think it's important that we lead by example from this chamber. Thank you. Before I look to Councillor Slama, can you just look to your screen, please, Councillor Abiyad? That does accurately capture what you're looking to do, and then I'm going to go to your seconder. That's correct. That's correct. Councillor Slama, you seconded the motion. The floor is yours. Resume my right. Resume your right. I've got Councillor Martin, Councillor Antic, Councillor Hender, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. May I ask a, a question first? Uh, I understand there's a media report suggesting that the impact of the draft submission being accepted in terms of uh, increases to payments to councillors would be of the order of seven to ten thousand dollars and for the Lord Mayor up to thirty five thousand dollars. Is that correct? Through you, Lord Mayor. Now that's not the content of the actual report or the proposal that we put to you tonight. Um, there's, it's been brought to my attention there's the potential for misinterpretation that by um, discussing some relativity to other capital cities that there's an inference that we would be paid the same as those capital cities. The report's clearly positioning just simply to so that contextualises the role of the City of Adelaide and the role of the elected members for the City of Adelaide and in considering that it contextualises we are a capital city and to not necessarily make the payments the same as other capital cities but simply to apply the same methodology in the process as other capital cities and considering other councils. So there's no statement in here about any increase whatsoever. It's simply talking about the relativity and for the remuneration tribunal to consider that relativity in any findings it makes. Thank you. Look, I, I uh, will speak in favour of uh, Councillor Abbott's amendment. Uh, yeah, I know it's very unusual. I, this is very sound and I think it reflects those good sleeps he has out at Utterly. So, um, this, is Lord an, Mayor, this is an alternate motion. This how is does he know I live in Utterly? Does he stalk me? Like, <laughs> Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, look, I think there is the potential for um, uh, the tribunal uh, invited to consider um, the relative um, payments to councillors in this city and other cities um, uh, leading to a, uh, a substantial increase. And I don't support that. I think that um, the payments made to councillors are, um, uh, in a way, um, incidental to what we do. We do this because we want to do it, because we want to do something for the community. It's not uh, for the love of money, that's for sure. And anything that's out of step with what's happening in the community will only tend to confirm the stereotypes that people have in their minds about political representatives. Uh, that stereotype is that political representatives, first and foremost, want to line their pockets. Now, I don't think that's true, and I think by supporting this, we demonstrate that we too are committed to financial responsibility. Um, I reflect on uh, the motion that was adopted by uh, the uh, local government conference in Canberra, uh, and I thank Councillor Clara Hand and yourself, Lord Mayor, for pushing that to ensure that there was a substantial increase in the new staff allowance. And, and it's, it's worthwhile reminding ourselves that there are a very large number of people in this community who live on amounts of $273 a week. Um, we, on the other hand, have the privilege of serving this city and uh, still being remunerated uh, to what I believe is a, a, an adequate amount to compensate for our lost time. Uh, Moreover, I, I think uh, that uh, if we were to increase any allowance, it should never be more than what the community uh, standard is. And the community standard at this time is simply the inflation rate, which is measured at around 2%. Now, anything more than that is unreasonable. Um, I, I do ask members to uh, support this motion and I support Councillor Abbott just in this motion. Um, because. Just, just this motion, um, because it is sensible, it is in step with community expectations. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I've got Councillor Antic, Councillor Hender, then the Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Antic. I'm just trying to work out how this doesn't arise some sort of conflict, um, a benefit or a loss that the Act prescribes. And I, I just don't see how any, any sort of submission that we would put towards this. I'm really uncomfortable with that. I'm kind of inclined to. Um, to declare one for myself, yeah. yeah. Nothing to do with you. Would you like advice? 
Um, yeah, I just I don't, I don't like to sail that close to the wind, frankly. So I think I'm just going to do that. You can. I can refer the matter to the CEO to take advice. Sure. Okay, well, CEO, would you like to comment? Yeah, Rudy will give us some good advice. Thanks. Through the Lord Mayor, <clears throat> ultimately that's the decision of the tribunal. Um, this submission doesn't specifically ask for an increase or a decrease, it's just asking to be uh, acknowledged in context of a capital city environment. Anyway, that's too close to the community, so I'll just clear it. Okay. See you Thank you, Councillor. So. Now I've got Councillor Hender followed by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hender. I don't have a conflict. Uh, <laughs> I won't be receiving any additional income because I won't be standing uh, for the next term. But I, I'm not going to vote for this and I foreshadow that if this doesn't get up, I'll, I'll be proposing the original motion. Um, just to give a bit of context, the original proposition we put to the tribunal, which was happened in my first term of, as being a councillor, was to draw attention to the tribunal's, um, uh, to draw to the attention of the tribunal that being a councillor at, on the Adelaide City Council as opposed to on the um, Robe District Council or uh, in the smaller councils are quite a, quite a different thing. And that uh, we have very significant responsibilities that other council areas don't have in that we're a capital city and therefore, and we're, and we're running the city. And as the, as the proposition, as uh, the letter points out, we are responsible for 18%, I think it is, of the. Um, GDP of the state in our very small council area. And so it was. we drew attention in our last submission, we drew the tribunal's attention to that. And as a result, they did make an adjustment. This is my recollection. They did make an adjustment which indicated that rather than being paid the same as everyone, every other councillor in the universe, we got, there was a differential because we're a capital city. I thought, I'm not sure whether there was always a differential and they increased the differential or whether they imposed a new differential. I don't recall. Um, but they did acknowledge, because we put, we put some proposition to them or we put some information to them, that the, that the duties we have are very significantly different to the duties of a councillor in a smaller council. Um, not just because it's a, um, our budgets are bigger and our responsibilities are bigger, but the civic aspects of our work were also significantly bigger. So I, I um, don't have any problem with us putting what I thought was a very mild-mannered um, document uh, through to the tribunal, which is basically saying, just remind you, as we made our submission last time, we were a different kettle of fish from everybody else and we need that differential to remain in place. And I think that's appropriate that that differential remains in place. Not for me, because I won't benefit from it at all in the future, but for the future um, future councillors. And, and I do, I, I've been talking to people because I'm not standing again and have been saying to people, why don't you give it consideration to standing? And one of the questions I very regularly get asked is, how much do you get paid? And I have to say, you will lose money by going on council because it will impact on the other work that you do and it will be, you, it will be certainly it has been to me, to my financial detriment to be on council. I could certainly be earning more money doing other things than being on council. I understand that that's a choice I made. I wanted to be on council and, and I wanted to make that contribution to the city and I, I understood that that would be to financial detriment. But, you know, not everybody has that luxury of saying, I can suck that up. Um, and we want a broad range of people who are willing to have a go at being councillors, and I think they ought to be properly remunerated. I don't, I'm, I'm not the least bit embarrassed about us saying, let's remunerate people properly. We're not telling them what, what we want. We're just saying to the tribunal, you're the tribunal, you take into account things like community expectations, very low increases at the moment. No one's getting big bumps in their pay, but people are getting CPI increases, and I can see no good reason why a councillor who's making a very decent contribution shouldn't also get that. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Deputy Lord Mayor, followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just a few questions of administration. Um, so, so the letter doesn't uh, quantify increases. That's been some sub subjective uh, posture, uh, posturing. Um, if we don't submit by the 6th of July, when is the next time that a submission to the tribunal can be made? My understanding from the letter we've received is this will be our only opportunity until the next cycle, which will be in four years' time. In four years' time. So, 
So, so the incoming council actually will be in exactly the same position. They'll be coming. Uh, they'll be at the end of their term before a, a future submission can go in. Um, I thank Councillor Hinder for her her words. Um, it is true. You know, I agree with what Councillor Martin said as well. You know, we're, we're not here for the financial reward. We're, we're here because we all want to make an impact on our city and do the right thing. But I also don't really want to make a decision for an incoming council, um, for whoever that might be. And um, uh, and there are significant hours that everybody puts in to be on council. Um, and so I would I think that the submission is worded um, in, a, in a very, uh, in a way that actually isn't asking for anything in particular. I don't think it's quantifying increases and I don't think that it's necessarily something that um, we need to step into and make a decision for the next council that's coming. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Wilkins. Uh, yes, I would echo the words of um, the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Hender. I, I think it's a um, uh, it's a sensible submission that's been put. The council has been asked to put in a submission for, and, and as the deputy lord mayor says, <coughs> the next opportunity for to review this isn't for four years' time. You know, it's not like first council meeting of the new term they could they get the opportunity to have a crack. That there, there would be no uh, no such opportunity. Um, it's a big it's a big undertaking. Um, being on council, I experience all the same experience that Councillor Hender does in terms of probably losing, losing, um, uh, you know, um, uh, money club being on council. People don't don't ask you to do things because they assume it's all because it's a capital city <laughs> function. They assume it's an all-consuming thing, so they actually don't ask you. Do they think, oh, you're actually too busy with the city council affairs and stuff like that. So, I frankly. Um, you know, appreciate the uh, consideration I get for my uh, considerable time in council, and I think it's a sensible submission, and, uh, and um, it's really just putting a point, and it's the the tribunal that makes the ultimate decision, not, not us. So I think um, it's it's perfectly reasonable for that submission, as prepared by administration, to put forward to the tribunal for their consideration. Members, do I have any further debate? Councillor Rabiad, something up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Motion fails. Yes, now I look to the CEO because I think there needs to be an outcome. As foreshadowed, can I yes, you can. Um, move the original motion as printed? Yes, you can. I look for a seconder. Councillor Corbell Moore. I don't think there's any need for debate. Members, do I have any debate? Oh, yeah. Councillor I just wanted to say uh, my understanding is that we wanted this kept at arm's length, that it actually didn't come back to us, uh, that it was that it was, pre was prepared by administration and submitted because it does tend to reek of self-interest um, and a potential conflict. And the other interesting aspect is that it happens every four years just before an election. Now, who would be so brave? I'll have the CEO clarify that very point. Councillor Clarehan, CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, should the recommendation be adopted tonight, the administration would proceed to make this submission without referring back to council. So, sorry, just clarify. Just clarification, is it possible that there is hands off by this council and that the administration make a submission? Yep, that is feasible, we understand. So what sort of motion would that require? I think you've got it, actually, yeah, councillors. I think that's precisely what's being uh, So asked. council still has to endorse it then, so that does smack self-interest. CEO. Is there any other way of council basically saying we wanted this kept at arm's length, we didn't want to get involved in this, um, and we asked administration to go away and and submit Three. something to the tribunal? Three of me, you can just delegate to myself uh, if that's the wish of council. Well, I'd like to. I don't know whether it's an amendment or whether it's a new motion or for, I need to foreshadow. You could suggest a variation and then I could look to your mover. 
Yes, I would suggest the variation that okay, what words would you like council it's delegates to the CEO um, any submission to the tribunal. I think you can fill the words in. Um, Okay, Councillor Fairhan, we'll treat this as a variation. How about we just, uh, yes, the council delegates to the CEO to make any, to um, make any submission to the remuneration tribunal by the deadline. And leave it up to the tribunal. Well, Councillor, but I'd leave the rest in, but just by way of being a variation, I don't want to substantially rework it, otherwise I would treat this as an amendment. So all, you, all, all I would accept as a variation, pending your mover accepts it, right, well, would be to instruct the CEO. to the CEO to make any submission. It sees fit. All right, Councillor Hender. Could you please look at that? Are you comfortable with that as a variation? Um, you are, so I look to your seconder. Okay, just take advice from the CEO. CEO, please. Okay, so members, I'm going to look to the floor for general comfort about the variation, which can be done. Councillor um, Hender, it's ask your a motion. You've got a question. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling a bit of discomfort about this. Yeah. Um, it, it is saying uh, to make any submission, but it's also saying it's got attachment A. Right. It refers to attachment A. I, I actually don't think I can accept it as a, as okay. a variation. Okay, so you can say no. You can say no. Sorry. Uh, the, no. Sorry That's all I'm looking for is a yes or a no. Okay. I'm going to remove myself. I'll address it with a summing up. Okay. Yeah, me too, Lord Mayor. I don't feel comfortable any longer. Okay, oh, sorry. So, <laughs> myself right Hold on, members. <laughs> so, members, we're now back to our original motion, which was moved by Councillor. We've lost court. <laughs> Lord Mayor, I will withdraw my second. So there's no members. I'll keep this meeting moving. That means I'll there's no decision. This, this matter. Withdraw the seconding. You're withdrawing the seconding. If you're withdrawing the seconding, the motion then just completely collapses. All right. So CEO, you have no instructions whatsoever. We'll bring the councillors back into the chamber and we'll move on. Thank you, Ed. For the benefit of the gallery, for the benefit of the gallery, we just lost a quorum, so we could not proceed with that matter. So I'll re-establish the quorum, and we will continue on with the council meeting. So, Lord Mayor, um, Councillor Carahan might be able to now move a, another motion in, ter in the terms that she was trying to seek the variation. Which is uh, which is about any no that's about just delegating to the CEO to make any submission. Look, can I just make a personal explanation? Well, members, can I please re-establish my chamber first, please? Um, could we please put a note out to the balance of the council members who are <laughs> not here? This matter has lapsed. We let we broke quorum. We have a quorum for the moment, Lord Mayor. But Lord Mayor, are you still going to deal with this item? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to move on to the next council item. Okay. No, I'm not. So, members, we proceed. So, members, I now take you. We have a quorum. I'm going to proceed with the meeting. Item 1214, progress of motions by elected members. To note, Councillor Hender, seconded by. <coughs> Councillor Corbell-Raw, any debate? I put it before you. Those in favour? 
Those against? We carry item 12.14. Members, item 12.15, you've got a report to note. Council Hand has got a hand up. This is new business registered, new businesses registered on the electoral roll. Council Hand, you're moving as printed, report to note, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Council Hand, do you wish to speak to this report to note? <coughs> Deputy Lord Mayor, members, do I have any queries or questions with regards to this report to note? I don't, so I'm going to put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Item 12.15. Members, we have three questions on notice. No emerging key risks again, CEO, well done. 13.1, uh, a question on notice by myself, members. The question was, since Council adopted the principles of the State Government's industry participation policy, can the CEO please advise what impact this has had on our procurement and purchasing practices particularly relating to South Australian businesses. Now, given that I asked the question, members, I would either say, would you like the CEO to read out the answer, or would you like to take it as read? Take it as read. If anyone in the gallery would like a copy of said question on notice, please put up your hand and it'll be brought to you. I'll take you on to your second question on notice, which was a question on notice by Councillor Martin regarding business mission to China. Councillor Martin, would you like to take your question and answer as read? Um, yes, Lord Okay, so again, if anyone from the gallery would like a copy of the question and the answer, please put up your hand. Councillor Martin, item 13.3, question on notice regarding guard at Beachy Cafe. Councillor Martin, again, would you like to take your question and answer as read? I can take that as read, Lord Thank you, Councillor. And again, should anyone from the gallery require a copy of 13.3, please do put up your hand. Members, that takes me to item 14 on your agenda, which is questions without notice. Do I have any? Councillor Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor. In the previous question on notice, the administration advised that the information I sought in relation to the memoranda of understanding was noted at the council meeting of the 25th of August, 2017. Could a copy of that report be supplied to uh, elected members? Allow me to refer that to the CEO, please. Three Lord Mayor, yes, we can do that. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further questions without notice? I don't, so I'm now going to take you to motions on notice. We start with item 15.1. Councillor Wilkinson, motion on notice regarding Bert Edwards, King of the West End, which is a book publication, page 179. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, I move the motion in my name and seek a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Hender. Councillor Wilkinson, Thank the you. floor is yours. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Um, this uh, council has had a long history of um, uh, cherishing and celebrating its history and its heritage. And um, and, and Bert Edwards was a, uh, an icon of the West End and uh, Patricia Summerling, the historian, uh, author has produced this. Uh, was producing this book about him, which um, is an important story of the city to be told, and is important to capture these things and uh, and for us to support such endeavours. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hendon, do you wish to speak to Councillor Wilkinson's motion? Uh, only briefly to support it. Bert Edwards was a very, very famous part of my part of the city, a very, very um, much loved member. This gives us an opportunity to. Uh, to help with the, the pinning down of a bit more of our city's history. Um, if we can do it in a budget reconsideration, um, then I think it's it's worth doing. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate about Councillor Wilkinson's motion? Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I uh, first heard of Bert Edwards um, in a uh, tour of the West Terrace Cemetery. That's how I heard about him. And he was he was just portrayed as such a colourful character. And everything that I heard was um, truly quite remarkable. And he was such a um, wonderful citizen. I think it's a great idea to produce a book about him so that his legacy can be read um, and enjoyed by many of future generations. I, I would hate for his story to be lost. So I think it's a really good motion. Thank you, Councillor. Any further comments? I'd take you back to your mover, Councillor Wilkinson. Well, thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore and Councillor Hender, for your um, supportive words. So, sum up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? 
Councillor Wilkinson's item, which is item 15.1, uh, is carried, which takes me on to item 15.2. Again, Councillor Wilkinson, motion on notice, review of on street parking charges and resultant utilisation, page 180. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion in my notice and seek a second. Seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Back to you, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, further to our budget considerations, uh, uh, the previous meeting, it was uh, suggested to me by Council Administration that this be put separately in order to allow the Administration an opportunity to uh, review that. And so this, this motion has been put together uh, in um, collaboration with the Administration. And I sent a photograph to members this morning of Sturt Street with virtually no cars parked in it. Point. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Corbell Moore, do you wish to speak to this matter? Just briefly, and this did come up in our um, committee meetings and in our discussions um, prior to this, and we did flag it as an issue for um, Sturt Street in particular. The parking um, is frequently not used where there's paid parking along Sturt Street. This is just out in front of my house. Um, so we do know that there isn't a demand for the price that's being charged at the moment. And I think it does need to be reconsidered because as soon as um, it goes past the point of paid parking, the space is typically filled up. Um, so there's obviously an issue to do with the price point. I think needs to be addressed. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate on this matter? Councillor Wilkinson? Sorry, that's that question. Oh, Certainly, Councillor Abiyad. Um, with regards to our smart parking uh, discussions, are we considering any uh, of the rollout towards Sturt Street, because obviously that will instigate um, some of this um, reporting, which look, I agree with. I think there's a lot of spaces in the city that we could review with a similar sort of lens, but um, what's the situation with smart parking? Thank you, Councillor Abbey, I'm CEO. Clear, thanks. Through the presiding member, um, 135 sensors have been placed along that part of Sturt Street that Council have brought to our attention. Um, so our intent is to use that data and insights to um, work out how best to make sure um, that street in particular is utilised to its maximum. So that will be used in this report? Excellent, thank you very much. Well, I'm supportive of this, Lord Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I see no further hands, so Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, I think it's important that we support all modes of uh, use of the city and uh, having uh, on-street parking in the city not being utilised at all is a complete waste and, um, and, and clearly we need to, to start pricing and this hopefully will provide a bit of a, um, um, uh, an approach for looking at other streets in the city where, um, where the parks are not being fully utilised um, due, to, due to the pricing. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Item 15.3, Councillor Abiyad. Voters roll. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I move the motion standing in my name. I'm happy to um, take it as read. You have a seconder in Councillor Cornell Moore. The floor is yours, Councillor Abiyad. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, with every motion, um, we've always got to look at what problem we're trying to solve. Uh, this has been a, a problem that's been around for quite some time. Um, and I've got seven points to try to focus on, so I'm really happy to, uh, to try to get this uh, through in three minutes. Um, but we're looking at three things to, um, to solve here. We're looking at um, candidates having access to the voters, uh, voters role electronically, similarly to any other council um, in Australia, and also uh, similarly to state and federal um, government candidates. Uh, to introduce compulsory voting for the City of Adelaide, this is a position of this council already. We have this on our books. We've uh, referenced that to the LGA uh, in a motion, and the Local Government Association did not support it. Um, and then we did speak directly to the minister uh, at the time, um, and that was being dealt with. So it's really important to put it on the new government's agenda. And thirdly, Lord Mayor, um, with the degradation of um, C and D great buildings um, and some of the vacancy rates we're experiencing, we're seeing a surge in co-working spaces in the city of Adelaide. They're established businesses. Some of them are digital. Some of them are on the ground, selling product and involved. The only issue is with the definition of who can vote in the city of Adelaide 
is someone that has a lease or a sublease in a lockable premises where now we're dealing in a complete different form. We're dealing with people on the cloud, people that have registered domains in our city, and most of them employ a lot of people, uh, and most of them are engaged in city business and city support. So it would make sense, just like any other small business and startup in the city, they should also have a vote. Um, the reason we're doing this is to lift the level of engagement and participation of voters in local government election. So that's that's a real important point. Uh, to bring Adelaide in line with Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. Um, allow candidates similar to other local governments, as I mentioned, to access the role. Uh, most candidates of local government in, the South, in South Australia stand for council because they tend to sometimes oppose something versus support something. And that's really important for us to be able to engage through this process, a collective of 23,500 of our ratepayers almost to be engaged in this process. Uh, if you really want to think about it, Lord Mayor, we have 7,500 votes in the city of Adelaide that determine the fate of 23,500 ratepayers. I feel very uncomfortable being elected on close to 700 votes to stand here and say, my ratepayers. That is a very hard thing to say because I've got to sort of reflect back and ask myself, who am I representing? 700 people, 23,500 people, 200,000 city visitors, or 1.7 million South Australians. And that is a very challenging dilemma when you're trying to couple or decouple the Local Government Act and the City of Adelaide Act. So I think reform in that space for capital city is really important to engage our ratepayers through that process. Um, so look, look, I'll sort of leave it here. I think it's quite self-explanatory. Self uh, but the one thing I want to note very quickly, if I can get a one second extension. Lord. Members, I look, yes, please proceed. The one thing that really, that really is important to note is our rates in the city of Adelaide are, are paid almost at about close to $100 million. Uh, 78 million of that is paid by business and 22 million are paid by residents. Uh, the business vote in the city of Adelaide or the representation is 10,137, where residents are 12,816. A business pays a factor of three times its rates than what a resident would, and I would argue receives some lesser services, and we're looking at that report at this stage. But the one thing to note is through a, an election process, out of the 7,500 votes, only 2,000 businesses voted where you've got 5,000 residents that vote. So the residents are voting at a rate of 50%, where businesses are voting at a rate of under 20%. So I think it's really important for us to understand why that's happening and why are they disengaged. And there's got to be a process either through compulsory voting or better engagement mechanisms where we can get more of those rate payers engaged in our process. Because if we do, I believe we'll make better decisions. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Corbett, what were you seconded to the motion? Do you wish to speak to it? Uh, just briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, I support the motion, um, all points. <coughs> Item 1.1, to allow for candidates to have access to the voters' role in electronic format. That's going to be really valuable because last time, I don't know about yours, but um, my voters' role was like this. It was like a brick, and it's not particularly user-friendly. What can you do with it? You're, high, you're whipping out a highlighter in this day and age. It should be in an electronic format. Item um, number 1.3, introduce provisions to the voters' role to ensure occupiers within co-working spaces have individual enrolment titles. Entitlement, I think this is so important. Um, we have ATMs and car parks that get votes in the election. And to have somebody working um, permanently in a co-working space that might not have be afforded that opportunity to have a vote doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so we need to update that. We need to move with the times. Um, 1.2, everything that Councillor Abiad has said um, rings true with me, um, in particular the idea that we're being voted in on such a small number of people who are participating in local government elections for a capital city. It makes a lot of sense. And I know this is probably the controversial one, which there might be some um, debate around whether there should be compulsory voting introduced at local government elections, not just for the city of Adelaide. But I'm happy to have that debate. Um, in particular around this idea of engagement and getting more people to participate in the process of voting and having a decision rather than just simply not involving themselves by not voting. Thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore. I've got Councillor Wilkinson followed by Councillor Martin. I just ask the movers prepared to take it in part. It's three quite distinct parts. <coughs> no, not really. No. I think it's important to communicate all that to the Minister. It's a Minister's decision.
Right. Well, I am quite supportive of um, the electronic roll. I think that's a, just a contemporary way of communicating. And um, I'm quite supportive of the um, uh, allowing for the new mo mode of co working thing. Give those people running small startup businesses and stuff in the city the vote. Um, however, um, uh, the compulsory voting is something which I, I mean, in our, our uh, voting attendance is, is actually um, as good, if not better, than the UK elections and the US elections, which are voluntary. And my concern about having compulsory voting for council elections is that, that basically I can see that favouring whomever is able to corral all of those people that really don't care what happens on council and corralling their, their, their vote, the people who, who are forced to, to the voting ballot. Um, and I'm not sure if that's necessarily going to result in the best sort of candidates, the, the people who can best corral those who don't actually even want to participate in the thing and are only participating to avoid a fine. Um, and it effectively has an effect of diluting the impact of those who, who, who do vote and, and care about what happens in the city. Um, because then gets diluted by, by, uh, by a whole lot of people who are basically forced to the ballot box for fear of a fine. So I don't think that that actually necessarily at a local government level results in, um, in uh, better outcomes. So I'll be happy to, if we've done in part, I'd be very happy to support the first to the third part. But, um, okay, the mover has said that he won't accept that, Councillor. So yep. thank you for your comments and I will move on. I've now got Councillor Martin followed by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I support 1.1 uh, and 1.2. 1.2 uh, is the Pact Out policy. We have put that view at local government conferences. And 1.1 is fairly uncontroversial in that it too has been discussed at uh, local government level. However, the stinker in this is 1.3. 1.3 is um, designed, as Councillor Abbott says, uh, to fix a problem. But it actually creates a problem it creates a serious problem where there's an inequality in the voting system. Uh, if you like, a gerrymander. It allows people who co-work in spaces to have the same voting rights as people who are rate payers occupying premises and paying rates. Now, I've given this example before. There's a hair salon in this city in which there are 10 chairs. Each of them is leased to a hairdresser for $50 a day. They are co-workers. They are permanent people uh, in the sense that they turn up Monday to Wednesday or Thursday to Friday. We know also that that same formula is used within department stores. The person who's standing in front of the Van Heusen suit section doesn't work for Meyer. he actually works for Van Heusen. Or the, the woman in the, uh, the bathing wear uh, shop in uh, David Jones, um, is actually working for the manufacturer, not for the department store. So you can have a circumstance, even in that little minor example of the hairdressing salon in the city, which had 10 chairs, where the owner of the building gets a vote, the person who leases the chairs gets a vote, and the 10 people who are in there leasing chairs, and it may be 15 by the way, there may be two or three working different days of the week, they all get a vote too. So in that little 100 square metres of a retail outlet, there are 12, 15 votes. And the 300 metre square building, or the 5,000 square metre building, is entitled to one vote. It's a gerrymander. It's a way of manipulating the voting system. Now, there is a problem. There is a problem. There are not enough voters uh, among businesses. I, I acknowledge that. But this is a very blunt instrument and one that would lead to inequality within the voting system. Now, Lord Mayor, um, I would suggest that Councillor Abiad um, is very ambitious in the way in which he wants to empower people. In fact, um, today's in Daily reported he wants to give co-workers and people casually come to the city and um, people from interstate City visitors, is that right? Um, and all South Australians. Just a say, point of order, Lord Mayor, on the record, I did not say that to him daily. I referred directly to my motion. I did not indicate that I want to give a vote 
to people that live interstate and don't come to our city. Oh, well, let me let me quote Ian Daly. City, he wants to give the vote to city visitors, workers, and all South Australians to say in the makeup of their capital city. Do you deny that? Oh, anyway, look, it's immaterial, Lord Mayor. They it's sure a gerrymander. And Jerry Abbeyard over there is seeking to manipulate the system in such a way. Councillor, you are sailing very close to a line. Oh, sorry. They sail way over. I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. I have made my point. It is. You a... have, and your members, are your members going to give you any further time to No, I'm not seeking it, Lord Mayor. I'm simply saying I have made my point. It is a, an inefficient way of dealing with the problem. And your time is up, and I've made my point. Uh, next, members, is our Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I support this motion on notice, and, and I actually support the introduction, the key word being in there, permanent occupiers of co-working spaces. Um, I established the office for the Festival of Ideas in the East End, and there are, um, in a space that opened in October last year, um, there are six very established businesses that have moved into that working space. Um, they've all worked in the city uh, for quite a long time and um, you know and they're all users of the city and some of them actually live in the city as well so uh, i think that would be a, a great thing what we are doing the more the more the more people that is called democracy the more people that can actually vote for their council representation um, the better representation and the more diverse the representation is going to be it's not a gerrymander no, <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Hender. Um, I, I just wonder, um, Councillor Martin has, I, I want to support this, but Councillor Martin has raised some issues about, you know, about the Maya Centre and those sorts of things. Um, can, can those things, I'm just wanting to um, get an indication from the administration about how this would be pursued um, if this gets up. Because there, there may there may be some unintended consequences of this. I understand what Councillor Avery is seeking to do, but there may be some unintended consequences of it. Uh, and I just want to make sure that those unintended consequences are, are managed. Well, mate, can I just make a quick comment? Because what, uh, just a, a point of order, what was said before is not correct. People in Maya, in those lockable shops, get votes already. That's not what I said, Lord Mayor, just a point of clarity. Um, that's not what I said. I said the counters, the sections within departments. I'm not talking about separate shops. Members, let's answer. CEO, can you please answer Councillor Henders' question? Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. Certainly, um, in providing the submission to the Minister, uh, we would need to do a bit of work to, to fully consider what is being resolved by Council, so we would provide that supplementary information. Should there be any major problems we encounter, we would refer back to Council. Thank you. Members, are there any further debate? I go back to the mover. Oh, the fight for democracy, Lord Mayor. It's always very challenging to allow people to have a vote. I come from a place where I lived for 16 years where I didn't have a say in what happens around me. And getting here at 19 to have a say is quite empowering. And then you get told by someone else, usually dictators will tell you you can't, you can't vote. That's what usually happens in that part of the world. But here we have democracy. So that's what we fight for. That's what we stand here. And we have a minute of silence before we start our council meetings is to remember our soldiers, our fallen soldiers and what they fought for. Um, but the most important part of all of this, Lord Mayor, is the reference to permanent businesses. These are people that have invested in our city, that have spent time in our city, uh, and are employing people and developing a social and economic benefit for the city of Adelaide. These are the people that were saying to, no, you can't have a say in what happens in town, but when you go out and check into an ATM, that ATM has a say in the city. A car park has a city, um, a city vote. An ATM has a city vote. All these people have city votes. But the people that contribute to the culture of the city, that have a coffee on Pill Street, that have dinner in the city, that engage and employ people in the city, we don't want them to talk about anything. And how is this different anyway, Lord Mayor, of having one premise where there's 10 businesses in there in a co-working space? How is this different from a resident that has five children? All of them get votes. Every single one of them gets a vote. Councillor Moran, please. Huh? So how is this different, Lord Mayor? Do we put a stop on how many children you can have because they'll have more votes in the city of Adelaide? Is that what we're trying to do? Is that the gerrymander that we're trying to focus on? 
We don't do that. We're an organic society. We will keep growing, and democracy will always decide our fate. So I don't accept the fact that for one premises, we can have 10, 15, 20, 100, 600 businesses, and I hope we fill buildings with businesses, and I hope all of them get to say in the city of Adelaide, just like residents do. Uh, that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here. If you have one person living in a house, if you have 100 people living in a house, they all get a say. In business, if you have one or 100, only one gets a say. And you tell me what is fair. I'll leave it here, Lord Mayor, and ask members to support my motion. Thank you, Councillor Rabiad. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Motion carries. Division, Lord Mayor. Carving. All those members in favour, please rise. <coughs> Councillor Abiyad, Councillor Hender, Councillor Slama, Councillor Corbell Moore, Councillor Clearahan, Councillor Bashaw, Councillor Moran. Thank you, councillors. I take you on to item 15.4, the fourth motion of notice for this evening. Councillor Martin, Rundle U Park, page 182. Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it doesn't require reading, does it? No, it doesn't, but I'll look for a seconder. You have a seconder in Count, uh, Councillor Rabiard. You had your hand up first. What were you looking to do? <laughs> I'll take the seconder to get the debate and then I'll look to you after. So, Councillor Slama, you're seconding. Floor is yours. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, this proposal will extend the initiative that began last year and has operated for three quarters in the Rundle U Park and serving Rundle Mall and the East End. It's uh, designed to offer encouragement to, visit, uh, to people to visit the East End, which is going through uh, some fairly tough times. Now, um, I have to be careful and the administration will uh, uh, wink at me or whatever if I go too far. But I, uh, I understand from MasterCard transaction data held by council that in the past few years, transactions in the East End, in Rundle Street, have been declining dramatically uh, to a point uh, which is the lowest in the last two years in July. Is that okay? Okay. And we're still the size of the transactions is declining as well. So there is real economic pain in the East End. Now, unless we extend the initiative that we introduced of the first hour free, in my view, uh, we'll also be giving our, our traders another kick um, by declining to extend this initiative, which has brought people to the city in the middle of winter when it is, in fact, the bleakest time for traders. Now, yes, it could cost uh, $80,000 over a period of six months until the end of the calendar year, funded by the quarterly reviews. Um, but we know a couple of things from the operation uh, of the opera over the last three quarters. Now, the first is that um, there has been a dramatic increase, tens of thousands, is that okay? Okay, well, I won't go into the numbers. We have had a very, very substantial increase in the number of cars taking up uh, the period of zero to one hour. And that number of people is greater than a concert at um, Adelaide Oval, perhaps, or um, some other location. It is a very substantial number of people. And they are pumping dollars into the economy of the East End. Now, um, depending on vehicle occupancy, um, it can be, believe me, a very substantial impact. Now, we also know uh, from the information available that there doesn't appear to be evidence that it's cannibalizing other parts of the U Park business. That's okay? No, okay, I've gone too far. All right, well, I'll stop there. Um, and um, we have to ask ourselves, um, can it continue to work? And the evidence seems to be it can. Now, Lord Mayor, um, I, and I know I'm, I'm not a representative of the Central Ward, but um, uh, some businesses asked to speak to me about this and explain to me how important it is to their business. One, an optometrist on the edge of Brundle Street, said it was vital because people have now got used to the idea that they can come into the city for their glasses, have a test, pick up their glasses, 
and it costs them nothing extra in the transaction. Additionally, a clothing repairer. Councillor, that's your three minute allocation. Uh, just a little. No, no sorry. I'll look, I'll look for the majority. Members, do I have it or do I not have it? Three minutes. I don't have it, I don't think. One, two, three, four. Unfortunately, I don't have it, Councillor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll curtail well, your time. So, members, I now look to the seconder for the motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Councillor Slama, thank, thank you very you much, sir. <laughs> Not sure where you're going, but uh, certainly in support to continue it on, at least through, as in your first point, December, end of December, into the, through the Christmas period. And, Certainly don't need the credit card data to tell me that there is an issue. Consultation with businesses, um, shops closing up, changing their hours back to save on wages is, is the leading indicator. So I'm, I'm a big supporter of Lord Mayor, not only for those traders in the East End, but certainly those in Rundamore. And, and certainly to Councillor Martin's point that businesses have spoken to me about the impact and it's taken that long to educate their customers hey, come on back into the mall the first hour's free it's taken quite a process to get the communication through and it would be naive to, to, to pull the button that so early thank you councillor i'll look to councillor corbell more than councillor councillor abiyad had his hand up earlier i'm being told councillor abiyad i'll then look yes no my mistake it was after the second i did acknowledge councillor abiyad sorry councillor corbett more i do apologize i did say that i would go to councillor abiyad straight after the second oh you did say so. i'll put my hand up first and you asked me why so just to note um i'd like to move an amendment to the motion Lord Mayor, or an addition really so item one to remain the same two to remain the same a new uh, item three to prepare a report to determine if this if this initiative has increased city visitation, net city visitation to the East End, and to try and determine the economic and social improvements it has delivered to the area and to the city. Thank you for your It's a motion on notice, it can't be very. Yes, it can be if the if the mover accepts it. Um, but are you are you calling that you're moving an amendment? So it's, it's ultimately your choice. You're, you're, you're moving an amendment. You're moving an amendment, that's what you're doing. So let's record it, then I'll look for a seconder, then you can debate your amendment. Councillor Moran looks like she's agreeing to amendment, but can we get the wording down first, please? Prepare a report to determine if this initiative has increased the net city visitation to the East End, and to try and determine the economic and social improvements it has delivered to the area and to the city. Okay, members, bear with me. Let's get this down and then we'll get the seconder and we will move on into debate and we are debating an amendment. If you look to your screen, please, Councillor, and assist the Secretariat as required. To prepare a report to determine... To prepare a, a report to determine if this initiative has increased the net city visitation to the East End. Yes and to try and determine the economic and social improvement slow down councillor slow down please to try and determine the economic and social improvements improvements it has delivered to the area and to the city it has delivered to the area and to the city and i seek a second of it Okay, your second is Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, you are happy with seconding what's now appeared on your screen? Okay, the Moran. floor is yours, Councillor um, Lord Mayor, um, as I mentioned before, um, in, a previous, um, in a previous term of Council, we have done this before, and I think we've done this before at better times when things were much better in the area. Uh, so I'm not pushing that we don't support an extension to what we're currently trialling. Uh, but it's really important, and I'm hearing this a lot from Councillor Martin and a few other councillors, it's really important that if this council was to impact by eighty to $100,000... Councillors, please, we've got a councillor debating. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, that if we are experiencing an impact of eighty to $100,000 as a result of this trial, that at least there's some measures that explain why we're doing it. The one thing I remain very unconvinced about is, does the East End need this? Yes. Is the messaging important? Yes. Is the perception there and there is an issue? 100%. Are people getting used to this? Yes. No problems at all. All that I agree with, and that's what warrants the extension. The problem I've got is I don't understand if that has delivered a net city visitation as a result of this promotion or 
we have ripped off cars out of Wilson across the road and other car park operators that happen to be our ratepayers in the city of Adelaide and moved them to our car park at a loss. That's the one thing I don't know. And no one can seem to tell me. So it's one thing to push the message very easily to say, we have a net increase of X amount of cars per day. We have a net increase in revenue, et cetera. Where are they coming from? And are they just simply mobilizing across the city? Uh, and that's potentially why we're having impacts from what we hear on other car park operators in the city of Adelaide. I mean, we don't know. So I think it's really important that we have an understanding via a report. If this has delivered an economic impact to the traders, Members, please. If this has had delivered an economic uh, improvement to the traders to the area, that is fine. We could almost substantiate it. And I think given the hardship that the East End has gone through, 100%, no problems at all there. But I think it's important for us to be accountable and understand whether we have had a net increase to the city as a result of this beautiful advertising package, or we've ripped off other white papers. And that's all I'm asking for, for us to be able to get a better understanding if we have a net increase, that's fantastic news. If we don't, we've got to sort of ask ourselves, are we solving a problem or we're just moving it around? Um, and that's it with me. Otherwise, I'm supportive of those two items. Thank you, councillors. So, members, you are debating an amendment seconded by Councillor Moran. Don't wish to speak to it. Do I have any further debate about the amendment? Oh, Councillor Corbell Moore, welcome back. <laughs> Councillor Moran again. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I won't be perturbed by Councillor Moran. Um, now, <laughs> look, I've got a, I do, look, I, I do support this at face value, but the thing is, we, we are now making a, a budgetary impact decision of eighty to one hundred thousand dollars, which we we don't have the data around. We're making this decision to support it. It's a good news headline. It's going to be supporting the East End. I've just been on the East End um, precinct group, which the City Council supports, and they've got um, a tab under, for parking and transport options where they list all of the car parks in the East End so that people can come to the East End with easy access. And they haven't even listed this as something on their own web page. Now, one of the reasons why I'm, asked, I'm, I'm pointing this out is because there's an issue with marketing here. <coughs> marketing of, the, of Rundle Street and that entire precinct and how, how we can use marketing to help bolster the whole main street. I'm interested to know from our administration what work have we been doing? What, what funds have we given to the precinct group? What money have we invested in the area? Because this is a eighty to one hundred thousand dollars. How does that sit with other funding that's been given to the precinct group or the work that been that's been done by the administration recently? I think yes, I'll support it. I can see the need for it, but we need to have a better look at what we're doing here to support the East End and not just the East End. There's issues with um, with Hutt Street. And, and retail vacancies on Hutt Street, there's issues with Melbourne Street. You don't need to go far outside of the city, you just go to Walkerville Parade and have a look at how Walkerville, Walkerville's going and their main street down there. I don't see many vacancies, so they're doing something really well, which we need to be having a look at in our administration. What could we be doing better for our main streets? It's not about providing free parking, it's actually about a bigger picture which is how are we marketing our city? We're competing with Westfield, Glenelg, and it's, it's not getting any easier. So I'm, I'm asking your administration, I, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but I'm really interested to know what have we been doing. Maybe you can take it on notice. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. <coughs> Members, we're debating an amendment from Councillor Abiyad. Uh, my next speaker on the amendment is Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'll support this amendment. I think that's quite sensible to measure the success of the measure. Um, if it has been a, a success, that will be evident. Now, I remind members that the success of this particular initiative was reported to them in confidence which is why I had such difficulty talking about it. And the information that was given to you showed the number of vehicles that had uh, taken up the offer of zero to one hour. It showed you clearly um, 
I can't say that either. It showed you clearly that it was uh, biting and making a difference on the street. Now, as to the marketing, um, the, the problem we have if uh, we don't endorse this, uh, <coughs> this whole proposal, including the amendment, is that the marketing will cease in December. The marketing has already done, been done for this initiative. And indeed, in speaking to some of the traders, uh, one in particular noted that council had provided a flyer which was placed on the counter, and that seemed to work better than anything else. That is, customers came in, noted that the offer was available, and said to the trader, wow, that's great, I'll use that in the future. Now, all of that marketing effort uh, has already gone into this project. Um, and this initiative, if measured as a success, may well go on into the new year. It may well be proved to be of economic benefit. If it's not, then I'll be uh, the first, although, you know, who knows what will happen after this election, but I'll, I'd be the first to say uh, we don't continue with this if it's not working, if it can't be proved that it's having an impact. But every anecdotal report says the traders believe it is working, and that should be reflected in any measurement of the initiative. Thank you, Councillor Martin. We're speaking to an amendment. Councillor Wilkinson, are you speaking before or again, or for or against uh, the amendment? For, for the amendment, I thank Councillor Abiyad for calling for this um, report. I think it's good to quantify and, and measure these things, and also for Councillor Martin for actually putting up this motion in the first instance. I think that, as, as Councillor Slama said, the continuity of this sort of um, thing is important in order for it to start to get traction and, and affect consumer behaviour. People who are coming between <coughs> naught and one hour aren't coming in to not spend money in the area. They're obviously coming in, parking quickly, buying something in the East End and, and, and leaving. Now, those sort of people who might otherwise be going to uh, some suburban shopping centre where they don't have to pay for parking. So I think that's where it, it, it can manifest a difference. It's just interesting though that we talk about the budgetary impact of an initiative like this to help out the East End. Earlier tonight, you know, we were talking about Adelaide Oval 2 and charging commercial things for there. And we, we, we chose not to not to charge a commercial fee for a valuable commercial entity such as the use of Adelaide Oval 2, where you could see where if we did, that sort of money would come back into the coffers of the ratepayers in order to support the endeavours of other ratepayers in measures such as this. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Are there any further hands with regards to the amendment? Back to you to sum up on the amendment, Councillor Abia. Members, I put the amendment before you. Those in favour? Those against? Carry. So we now have a uh, an amended substantive motion, which was moved by Councillor Martin. I don't see any further comment about it. Summed up. Summed up. I put the amended motion, as in the substantive motion, to you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. That concludes motions on notice. I look to you members for item 16, motions without notice. I don't see any hands. I now move to item 17. Members, we have two matters to debate in private, in confidence, 18.1.1, strategic procurement matter, and 18.1.2. So I need a mover for 18.1.1. Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Moran. I'll put that straight before you. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Second matter, 18.1.2, strategic property matter, moved by Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. I put that matter straight before you, members. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Can I ask all personnel in the gallery and all staff who are not directly related with both of these matters to kindly leave the council chamber and we thank you for your attendance.
before I formally close it. The doors are open and I formally declare that the meeting of Tuesday the 26th of June 2018 is closed at 9.50pm. Thank you members for your attendance, thank you CEO, thank you administration. Greatly appreciate it.